Welcome back, everybody, to the ATLC. Kibler, sit up a little bit. Like, okay, I'll stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll awkwardly perch. Like, all right, that sounds my, good. My fear complex needs you to sit down. But no, I mean, like, okay. wall sits, need like, you. working out, you know, just do this for the entire match. I'll be ripped by the end. Yeah. I fully accept my uh, Hobbit ascendance. <laughs> Hey man, you saved the world. You saved Miller. Oh, isn't your name after Frodo? It is. Yeah, there we go. Wow, see? Right. <laughs> I, I will carry you I on my back that. up Mordor. I'm yeah, like Strider over perfect. here you know, with the Hobbit. You're like yeah, yeah. Gandalf. You're Gandalf. I, 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 I was about to say, I don't know if I'm old enough to be Aragorn, Gandalf, but like, actually I'm probably Nimsh the oldest person here. So. Yeah, Aragorn sounds good. <laughs> Alright, uh, well we have our roles set, but uh, one thing that we need to set is who is going to be fourth place here yeah. at ETLC. I think uh, it's been a long journey. Um, Seven weeks of regular play, followed by playoffs, redemptions, and finally getting here to the to the last stage. And one team is going home with nothing. Nada. And it's going to be between Temple Storm and Nilum. Now, I'm guessing you guys are glad that you're in the money, Kibler. It is, it is a relief, for sure, to not be uh, at risk for having spent all this time playing in the league and in this you know finale as well and, and, and leaving home empty-handed. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, Nihilum is going to have to climb again. If they end up going, you know, let's say first or second place somehow, if they get there, um, they'll have gone through the absolute most difficult uh, yeah. road. No no questions. The like, most possible games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the third place has to play the most games, which is really difficult for someone like RDU who's already getting ready for bed. Yeah. Know, but based off of normal conventional European time zones. Uh, but at the same time, Temple Storm also has Eloise who's playing already in the wee hours of the, the morning. I believe right, right now it's uh, 3 a.m. ish for over there. So there are some difficulties in syncing up. And keep in mind that for round two here, or the last day, you get to submit a second group of deck lists, which yeah. already has happened. Eloise is not playing the mage, he's playing the warlock, and Hyped has ditched the druid for the mage. So no druid for Temple Storm. And um, on RDU's side... Unsurprisingly, Shaman is gone. Yeah, no Shaman! <laughs> I, I believe, That's a shocker. I believe RDU's final record with Shaman was something like 1 in 10. Yeah, it's something like like a wow. 10% it was, even it was, maybe. It was yeah. incredibly poor. It's actually, I mean, yeah, 9% win rate. Right? Yeah, <laughs> no, that, was, that was 9, but like, nine, I, think, I think it was 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Single digits. Repeating, of course. Yes. <laughs> but we'll round up to 10. The, the fact is that you get another chance here, and uh, Life Coach is going to also be playing Warlock and Warrior. Ardu is going to be switching completely here to um, the Hunter, and I, I can get behind yeah, that. Yeah, sure. the Mage was given a dice as well, so I'm guessing it's not going to be a Mech Mage this time around, knowing yeah. that he's a very uh, solid Freeze Mage player. I, I'm curious to see if, if they do choose to make that switch, because there were no Freeze Mage uh, players right. in, the, in the entire finale thus far, and... Uh, it, it is a deck that can struggle with some of the popular decks. It struggles with Patron, it can struggle with Hunter, it struggles with Druid. Uh, but it, it is a field that's had a lot of Priest presence, mm -hmm. and uh, as well as Zoo, both of which are, are very, very strong matchups for Freeze Mage yeah, in general. Absolutely. And Secret Pal Paladin as well. Yeah. Secret Paladin is also almost uh, something you can farm, because it's really hard to lose to it as Freeze Mage, unless mm -hmm. something gets completely out of hand. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of liking the choice from Thais. Maybe Hyped as well picked out the Freeze Mage. There's a possibility of that. There's a possibility. Um, he, he did bring Mage, I think, once or twice during the regular season and everyone including myself was expecting freeze mage and then he busted out Mech yeah mage. i saw that and i know he he does that so that way he can keep people thrown off um however this is where the rubber meets the road so to speak and you need to like buckle down and this is the deck that you have to ride to the finals assuming that you, you don't want to just win one match you want to be able to win one two maybe three matches for both these teams so you play with what you're most comfortable with tice is most likely going to be playing Freeze Mage. You can bet Life Coach is going to be playing Handlock. You can anticipate Hyde probably playing Freeze Mage. And I'm, you know, I'm expecting like RDU to be playing like aggressive Paladin. Like these are the lineups that you right. normally see throughout the regular season. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually like this. Assuming these 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 changes that we're talking about are are accurate, I actually right. like this strategic decision from Nihilum. Uh, as both Handlock and Freeze Mage actually match up quite well against a number of the decks that we've seen so far. We were just talking about Freeze Mage, but Handlock as well you know, matches up quite well against Patron. Yeah. It, it is one of the very few decks in this metagame that we've seen that, that Dragon Priest actually struggles with significantly. Yeah, and it actually is almost an unwinnable situation. Sometimes you'll see a streamer say, play Dragon Priest for fun, and then Handlock comes up and they're like, well, why don't you just concede? Uh, it's even worse, I think, than some of the Control Priest deck they use to run sometimes. Because uh, you, I mean, you can apply some pressure, but you're 
your board will never be as threatening as theirs, uh, or at least very rarely. So. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are cards that you can play that can improve yeah. the matchup. Uh, obviously, if you have the, the full copies of Shadow or Death, Light Bomb, Vol'jin, they right. are all ways that you can try and get a bit of an edge over Handlock. But given that there was no Handlock in the field, I would be pretty surprised to see too many of those uh, in the, the player's new priest decks. Or can you anticipate it? I it's mean, possible. It, it's one of those things where if Life Coach just switches to Handlock, and then you see the other two teams don't switch over, and they're still playing more of like Warlock Zoo, or looking like they're going to f- uh, be on the faster walk, and all of a sudden the lineup dynamic changes. Because mm-hmm. that was another thing too. Um, for Value Town and Cloud Nine, you guys had similar decks, mm-hmm. the very core part of it, and then it's all about how these lineups kind of interact with each other. Yeah, and I mean. It is coming from the position of, of someone who who is you know already seated into the the higher round. It is actually a big advantage for us, not only that we are already you know guaranteed money and and uh, a chance to play for more, uh, but we actually get to see the cards and decks these players actually bring. Yeah, that's a substantial advantage round. actually, considering that you you'll be playing up against whoever wins this right right, right. afterwards. And 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 Cloud Nine gets to watch all of their potential yeah. opponents the entire the entire day before they get me uh, you know they get to see them in the finals. Yeah. So while it's not double elimination strictly, they don't have to beat them twice it is a huge advantage they have waiting in the finals already yeah. okay okay well uh I, I mean do you guys have any feeling like based off of let's just go ahead and assume this is the the, the type of decks we'll be seeing like we'll be seeing handlock from life coach uh and if tice is playing like freeze mage this kind of stuff wh- who would you favor if anybody um, I mean, I, I think that if that's Handlock and uh, Freeze Mage and the uh, the Tempo Storm lineup is also Freeze Mage, I actually think the... Uh, the, the, Hill the, Hill Druid, yeah, the, the Druid, yeah, the Druid kind of makes a little bit of a difference there, although it's got some weak matchups, obviously, and possibly mm-hmm. Zoo, uh, if it is. I actually think that, that looking yeah. at looking at Tempo Storm's lineup, um, they if if, that, if that's Zoo, uh, yeah. that's that's a tough matchup. But if that is Freeze Mage, that's actually quite a good, good matchup. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, in in our our match against Nihilum, we were actually quite scared for our Druid's ability to actually pick up a win in a lot of spots because. They had four decks that we felt we were. It we looks were hopeless. Uh, yeah. And uh, but here the the lineup from Tempo Storm, uh, I feel has a number a number of places where uh, Druid is much more likely to be able to pick up a win. Yeah. Well, let's see the patron warrior probably patron from height. We've seen him play a lot of control during the season. I don't know if that's what he's going to be bringing now. Uh, but against the uh, Mech Mage is my guess, right? Uh, from Tice, there's a uh, freeze mage. Sorry, from Tice, there's that's a pretty rough matchup for the mage player if uh, the patron or control decides to play defensively. It's almost an auto loss if Hype decided to bring a uh, control warrior. Uh, I've actually been told I haven't actually played this match, but yeah, go on ahead. either side, I, right. I, I never play freeze mage and I never play control warrior. Interesting, but my understanding is that uh, there are certain certain ways you can approach the matchup as a patron warrior player against freeze mage where you're basically just not using any of your card right. draw. And they can pretty much never beat you because the, I'm, I'm told that the games almost universally go to fatigue if you play them that way. Uh, and if if hyped has that sort of strategy going in, and Tice is in fact playing Freeze Mage, uh, that could be very very difficult for him. Yeah, we've seen uh, like Zile, for instance, is a great patient player, and you see him on turn one already mm-hmm. starting the uh, you know the, the fatigue game. Uh, very frequently, there has been an, uh, an occurrence, I think, of him not playing Armorsmith, and for that reason, he went more aggressive mm-hmm. in that specific matchup. But when you're playing the Armorsmith, there's no reason not to wait for that crazy, you know, I'm going to gain uh, 20 armor right now, and good luck, Mage, going through this without a crazy Archmage turn. I mean, if, if your ultimate plan every time yeah. is, is, is to fatigue them, you know, you, you can start from turn one on. Exactly. So. Uh, there's also, you know, some interesting uh, interesting tech decisions that, uh, that some of the... Freeze Mage decks can make. I'm told to actually beat this. Dog was telling me that one of his teammates in the uh, the NA versus China match uh, actually played a Cold Light Oracle uh, duplicate Freeze Mage deck because oh. hmm. instead of Acolyte of Pain, so because you didn't have Acolyte of Pain, you're not drawing more than your opponent, right. so you're actually able to fatigue them. And he was. It was it's it's you know just this bizarre sort of weird. going super super deep to win like one specific matchup. Yeah, kind of like this. That, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Also, also, I, I was told that uh, that duplicate is another another tech card that can give you a lot better chance because you can actually play Antonitis, play duplicate, Absolutely. and yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, if you're able to actually duplicate Antonitis, it's like okay, you're they're just not able to beat you, and if they don't kill it, then all right, well, you just have Antonitis in play. Yeah, Antonitis is uh, one of those uh, prime targets you can duplicate for that specific matchup. But how much does it harm other matchups as well? Like that's that's part of the issue. You can. Like, like every deck that you prepare for the ATLC, you know that patron and that kind of deck will come. Can you 
take afford that risk to like make all the other matchups worse just so you can beat it. And we do see Ice Block in Tice's opening hand as we're getting yeah. into the game here, and clearly Freeze Mage. So. Yeah, it's a Frothing Berserker as well for Hype, so definitely a patron deck. It's a little less favored, of course, than Control Warrior, you know, because they're not armoring up as much, they're not putting down as, you know, the biggest threat. Um, and Tice, you know, playing the typical Freeze Mage. It's an uphill battle for Tice, but not an unwinnable one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm curious to see if, if Hyped is going to take this, you know, I am playing for fatigue from turn one type of approach to the game. Does that mean he throws back the Acolyte? Well, I, yeah. I actually, from my understanding, you might that, that, mean, it, from my but... understanding that, that means you never play Acolyte of Pain. Like never. this is okay. that you just you just Acolyte of Pain and Battle Rage that you just keep in your hand. I, this is, again, something that I've only, I've only sort of heard secondhand, but uh, it's an interesting approach, I think. I mean, I would maybe consider playing the first Acolyte just because uh, you're going to need to find the, the shield blocks or some of the potential ways to remove minions from mm -hmm. your opponent. I mean, Freeze Mage does play minions, as weird as it sounds. You know, there are the... Uh, they can beat you, though. <laughs> yeah, they can actually hit you for a solid 10 by the time you're able to deal with them if you don't find the Axe. Uh, so maybe that makes Hyped willing to play minions uh, and the Acolyte including. Okay, well, now it's where you have to evaluate what type of mage this is based right. on the coin into the scientist. Coin is a really valuable card. You can convert that into a fireball if you save it into the Antonitis. It's not as simple as grabbing board tempo because you often don't need to do that early on. But Tice, with this very aggressive move in the very beginning, already has made hype question like, well, I mean, if I thought it was Freeze Mage, maybe I do play the Fatigue game and slam without having to commit drawing a card. Versus if it's more of like Tempo Mage or something else, then he has to be careful. It looks like he is just going with the Slam, taking out the Mad Scientist with no card draw. Yeah, if you see Loot Hoarder though, it's a big tell that it's going to be Freeze Mage. They know not only that, but you also know Thais as a player, right? You know a lot about the player. And the last time I saw Thais play a non-Freeze Mage, it's basically never. It's basically never. <laughs> it is It is pretty valuable to know your opponent's tendencies. Yeah. And, you know, like for instance, we were saying, you know, we see, we see Life Coach playing Warlock. That's probably Handlock. And actually going in... To the earlier matches in the finale, we saw that that they had a warlock deck that was not life coach. We're like, okay, this isn't this, this isn't, isn't handlock. handlock. Is, yeah. he, he is the handlock specialist, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Um, Dice has the ice barrier up and not the ice block. We could see it because it couldn't uh, it couldn't be played, so you can't uh, double up on the ice barrier right right now. Okay, well, uh, Hype can start taking out these loot holders. The damage that the loot holders get to sneak in are very relevant. Yeah. The Being able to peck away at the warrior's health count is super clutch as the game winds down because it's e these kinds of games are usually either like really close where the, the mage overkills warrior by like maybe 2 or 3 HP or the warrior runs away with like 50. Mm -hmm. So it's because you always get to that point where maybe you could kill your opponent um, but if you can't then you just get blown out. Yeah and that's a really great pickup from Thais. I mean getting the Emperor here he's gonna have to wait maybe to find a more opportune time but with a Frostbolt and an Ice Lance already in hand uh, at this point he's basically looking for Archmage and possibly other spells to, to just get the maximum value he can out of it. I mean, Emperor is one of the cards that, that gave Freeze Mage the ability to compete with right. higher totals of armor than uh, than you know previously was possible, there was a point when Freeze Mage decks pretty much had a, a cap on the amount of um, damage they could deal because of the, the mana restrictions surrounding Antonitis. But with Emperor, that sort of all goes out the window. Okay. Well, uh, looks like uh, Tice is going with the plan of just taking it slow. No need to overreact. And Hyped is going to respond by playing just, you know, Farthing Berserker. He's not expecting this to actually do much. There's so many tools your opponent can have, whether it's uh, being able to freeze your board instead of Doomsayer, just remove the, the Farthing Berserker. But he's just provoking his opponent to do stuff. Yeah, can you can you really justify playing the... Uh, like, if you had Doomsayer with Frost over here, it probably wouldn't be good enough. Uh, maybe? Maybe, would it, maybe it would be, depending on whether or not you have the Flame Strike for the inevitable patrons. Right, I think, I think. This, how he removes it is not important, right. versus he's forcing, he's forcing Tice remove, to do yeah. this um, instead of setting up stuff, right? Instead of, like, setting up his secrets comfortably, so that way he can drop, Am um, not Antonitis, the Emperor Thorson, the Emperor Thorson. Or making sure he has a clean enough board, so that way he doesn't have to use removal pieces. Because every... Uh, Frostbolt that he's directing at the Frothing is not going to his face, and that's less chances to chain things like the Ice Lance. So if size goes for this line of play, there's a chance that Hyde can actually mill him a card, right? Oh no, I was gonna say if he pinks his own Acolyte, then that's possible, but in this case, uh, he's just gonna get one card out of his own. One thing that I really like that it was very subtle that we didn't really talk much about is that Hyde decided to mulligan away his Armor Smith. Yeah. I think People are always quick to jump on the armor smith train of like, I need to get armor as quickly as I can. 
but they don't realize uh, as po how powerful double armor smith can be in uh, compared to just one armor smith on its own. Yeah. When you can flood the board with patrons, you can get two armor smiths. You want to drop them simultaneously, especially in this matchup where armor makes the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, which armor smith is a is a much pow more powerful card later in the game in this yes. matchup. Yeah. Like you're saying, the ability to get multiple triggers at once. You know, when you 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 set up your your double armor smith in whirlwind and you know with with patrons or whatever else. Uh, whereas just playing it early early in the game, it's it, you know can just die and maybe maybe get caught up in a Frost Nova Doomsayer and not really give you much value when that armor is is crucial to victory in this matchup. Yeah, precisely. Now it's again they've both been drawing a, a little bit amount. You know the blue quarters, the acolytes, and so the, I, I would say they're around even in fatigue. Maybe he hyped a little bit ahead because he did draw two per acolyte. Well, a very small margin, maybe. Yeah, that right. would be like a very small margin. But the frolicking needs to be answered. You can't really just. Uh, ignore it and play secrets. 16 to yeah. 16, 17 to 16. So thanks exactly. to Mad Scientist as well. Oh, you're uh, right, actually you're pulling right. Thinning the deck. deck. He is a little bit farther ahead uh, in terms of the deck count. Uh, and so. this is what Hyped would like to put his opponent into the position. He's like, well, he has a decent amount of cards in his hand. I don't want him to get a comfortable Emperor Thorson. Tyus instead opts to draw some cards. Do you Nova ever? Uh, Nova gets better as the game goes on too Progresses, because of yeah. the Patron Warrior. Oh, sorry, the patrons. I mean, there's a warrior. Yeah. <laughs> it's always because the patrons. It's it's always he's a warrior-looking guy. He gets, yeah. you know, he, he wants to brawl. He's Something got the, a warrior he's got the does. noxious beard. <laughs> oh, man. Noxious. Yeah, you could do a good Magni cosplay. Oh, thank you, friend. Yeah, see? Yeah, you got I could like, work on that eventually. Now we just need to get you a hammers that glow blue. I think Magni oh, actually God, has the no. best emotes in the game. He by, does. by, like, a lot. Yeah. Like, I actually yeah, there's real close. voice acting. So yeah, Sony, friend. Really like, just that actually makes me tilt. But so like, on, on one way, on, like on one hand, I feel because it feels like the guy who actually did the emote felt sorry, but he didn't realize that Blizzard doesn't want him to feel sorry. Like he actually wants the players to just impose like uh, misery on the opponent. He looks well, too sincere. <laughs> two armor smiths. Um, yeah, but, but there is a turn of coming up where there's flame strike potential. And you want to be able to put the the armor smiths when there's a lot of patron copies and, and pressure, and you yeah. can get a couple whirlwinds down, so you don't mind it getting blizzard or or flame strike because you just get like 16 armor. So I think uh, Hype's just going to hold on to it, even though this was an opportunity he could hypothetically drop both arms. Yeah, and the Battle Rage as well is a kind of a dead card in this matchup, especially with hand size like this. Sometimes we'll be able to get it early and maybe, you know, use it as a pseudo acolyte of pain. Uh, but in this case, it's probably going to overdraw much more than you're comfortable with. Well, Speaking of overdrawing, Tice is a gigantic hand. He is, I believe actually has 10 cards. Yes. Um, do you Emperor this, or do you still have to wait for the inevitable Archmage? Because Archmage makes this hand, you know, it takes it from good to absolutely insane. Uh, well, the problem is that you still have to let this, make sure this five doesn't do too much damage. It's already done eight, I think. Yeah, next turn could be an issue. So you just don't want it to put enormous amount of pressure because there's two things one your opponent might gain too much life two your opponent might get too much damage so you, you definitely don't want either to be the case here the uh thanos here is just enough cycle so that way he doesn't overdraw but at the same time again he's looking for better answers and sometimes thanos is needed in uh, order to it was pretty sweet here though i mean killing the yeah. frothing without having to expend the two mana lets him set up the ice block you know kind of on curve so uh, it does what it has to Gives you a card draw. Yeah, and Hype's taking this really slow. He's played a lot of Freeze Mage. He, I mean, I was even yeah. talking to him before the match, and I was like, well, what if they bring Freeze Mage? And he's just like, no, Freeze Mage still doesn't be Patron. Like, he, <laughs> he knows. He's he's played a lot of Mage, and so he understands the dynamic. And it's, it's one thing to be very well-versed on the side that you're playing on, but... To also have the information as an experienced player from the other perspective. Yeah, there's there's a lot of value to uh, even if they're not decks that you plan to bring to tournaments, right. actually getting practice with popular decks because yep. understanding not only how your deck works but what yep. other decks need to do to beat yours from their perspective yep. gives you a, a bit of an edge. I mean that that was a criticism even you know even against you, Kibler, because you you are good at piling the decks that you play. But you know how you said yourself you don't play Freeze Me, you don't play mm -hmm. Control Warrior, uh, and those kinds of perspective can be helpful sometimes. I'm Loving the cone cold here, using it as just two damage, basically a, uh, I mean, it's kind of a ping plus one spell damage with the blood mage. But that does reduce the amount of minions on the board, of course, for the uh, inevitable AoE that your opponent might be trying to set off with armor smiths. 
Yeah, or patrons, or yeah, or for all things, whatever, right? Like anything goes. Well, uh, shield block is something to do. (laughs) More something to do. I wonder if hype's going to just get to a position where he feels like the need to just drop something on the board, even if he doesn't want to. Like, realistically, you don't expect this um, first Warsong commander to do much. If his hand gets too full, is there ever a point where you just drop something like it's been done, the Warsong? Yeah. Where you're like, ah, I, I, I don't want to overdraw and lose, though. Yeah, still no Archmage inside for Thais, though, so that Emperor... I mean, the Emperor's still good, right? You've got the discount on Frostbolts, double yeah. Ice Lands, the Novas for two, and you've got a Fireball yes. for three. Um, I think it's worth picking up, because even if the Archmage is maxed, as far as cause goes, at seven, right. you're still able to weave in the uh, double Ice Lands, double Frostbolt on that turn and get yourself four more Fireballs. This is what he wanted. Yeah. Because now Hype has something to crash the ghoul into. He can get more armor from this. He can get patrons from this. This is where the armor literally might just get out of control. All right. Ping might, the though. I mean... There is a realistic chance that Tice could utilize so many cheap spells to his benefit. I don't know. It looks really rough, right? Yeah, it looks really rough. If you can just start getting... Because he can whirlwind twice here and kill Emperor and, yeah. and put two Armorsmiths down. Yeah, that's so, dis- like disastrous. If he, if, he plays, if he plays, for instance, Armorsmith, Armorsmith, hmm. Patron, Attack Ghoul, and Attack Face, yeah. you, just, you just generate so much armor. Yeah, it's actually better if you attack Face first, so that way you get the unstable gold to get you two more armor, and then crash, and then whirlwind again. Uh, sure. And yeah. then you, you can even execute, mm-hmm. so that way you can you heal the everything. emperor. Yeah. Maximize your armor. That's like the key to this matchup. You're, you're going to have more armor than health. Yeah, I think Hypeblade is pretty, like, at this point, Thais must know that there's almost no chance to actually <laughs> go through everything. When you see, once you see the patron fall down with the double armor smith and the whirlwind, there's almost no Oh, he's going no super way. all in on the armor smith. Wow. Well, a lot of armor. I mean, who needs execute, right? You can just uh, <laughs> attack the Emperor afterwards with the death spite. You don't really need it at this stage. Yeah, he can he can keep his death spite too. Yeah. He doesn't have to attack with it. it. It'd be scary though not to, I guess, considering what Mage can do with a double sure. Emperor trigger. Also reasonable. Uh, this this is sequence a lot of armor. A lot, a lot. I think uh, this is also wise from hype to keep both executes understanding that there are other two big targets that you want to take care of the Alex Straza as well as the um, Antonitis and if you can't deal with either they can make up a lot of damage yeah I don't know if they can do that much damage though. yeah look, look at that look at that look at that armor and it's only gonna get worse because you have to kill this board so the only way you yeah. do this without dealing damage to it and feeding even more armor 72. is the Doomsayer 72 72 yeah casually currently at 72 that's it we might hit a record, and I've never seen more than, I think, 80 in competitive play. That's going to be a really powerful shield slam to the face on a rat <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, shield please no. Is big. Yeah. It happened before. I mean, Titus is a 36, and shield slam face still yeah, kills him. Yeah, it is. <laughs> too bad he doesn't run that in his deck. Unfortunate. He can't even execute the face either, because there's too much life and armor. Yeah, he's not even damaged. No, he can't even execute the face. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nova Doomsayer means you're reducing the amount of damage uh, of armor can be gained, but... It's just, it's not enough, right? Like, even, you, you almost don't want a flame strike. But what are you going to do if you don't? You, kinda, you could Nova once here. Maybe there's an argument for stalling a bit before you flame strike. The the, the Doomsday doesn't even guarantee anything. Yeah, right. You, it's a hope, could right? play the War Song, start copying stuff, start damaging stuff. And you're back in the same position. In fact, slightly worse because there's more minions on the board and flame strike once again gives a lot of help. But the good news is that uh, he killed off one of these armor smiths. So it's so, half, the, half the armor, right? Yeah, it's half the armor. Well, where's that going? It's going to the face. There's, there's, no, there's no point in, like, fireballing a patron. He's got to get something going <laughs> I'm, here, I'm you like, know? Oh. He's like, well, I'm going to go through that armor eventually. Might as well just get started. <laughs> and, you know, after Hype took an intense blast of crazy temperatures resulting in fire, he's at 16 Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that, that's not as threatening as, yeah. uh, as you make it sound. Yeah, he, he, Fireball did like less than a tenth yeah. of his total his total effective health, yeah. which is just outrageous when you think about it. <laughs> Patron's balanced. Oh uh, well, I think it's just more of the difficulties of overcoming it. It's gotten yeah. even worse with cards like Just a Card True Heart coming out. Um, yeah. against Patron control of course, so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like in general, Freeze Mage lost a lot of ground in TGT in my yeah. opinion. Um, Decks got better with the early game. Like Darnassus Aspirin comes out, so their Druid matchup is even harder now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then, of course, just go to I mean, I even I even think that that priest, which is a, t- a you know dragon priest. Yeah, I think it used to be like well, it used to be basically unlusable for people right. in a lot of cases because they're, they're, yeah. because because they're playing against decks that really aren't in doing anything proactive. But if you're playing a dragon priest deck that has low theb in it, you can actually generate a pretty big board, low theb them, and, and actually then, put them in a really yeah. tough spot. Mm-hmm. All right, Tyus gets rid of the boards. He's pretty happy this Doomsayer went off because there's no more armor gain on the uh, hype side right now. Besides the armor up, of course. You yeah. know that. I think uh, hype still feels comfortable at 70. Yeah. Uh, for Tyus to generate 70 points of damage, he needed Alex Straza to come out now. He needed Antonidas to come out also very quickly. Um, and in order to do that, he needed to generate fireballs. And his opponent had to not have removal for his minions. So it's a bunch of conditions. Which unfortunately do not get met. Yeah, he might just uh, try to drill into his win conditions. You know, he he's been wanting to get those. He got a really good emperor. If you think yes. about everything, uh, step one. Yeah, two ice lances and a frost bolt. That's a, you know decent amount of damage. This this doomsayer is pretty interesting because it doesn't actually do anything against hype's board because hype has no board, but. He's setting up the the ability to actually potentially play that Archmage on an empty board rather than actually allow Hyped to potentially have anything in play to threaten it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think we'll see a uh, a Frost Nova just because? Ever? Because like he could just get an extra Fireball from doing so because he expects to lose the Archmage right as after it comes down the board. Yeah, it's a legitimate opportunity to. Um... Hype's thinking if if he just plays patron with the Warsong Commander, the that kill, gives him uh, yeah. gives him the ability to kill this uh, Doomsayer, mm-hmm. and he can intimidate the board a little bit. One thing that I am curious about too is Hype didn't set up a weapon last turn. He just decided to pass, and he could have had the Death Spite in play. That was that was curious to me. I, I'm, I, I wonder think... what his motivation was. Not giving away the fact that he has it. Maybe lets his opponent uh, play into it. If that does anything, because I mean, is there another, is there another line of play that? Um... And this is another interesting point. Just now, he actually clears the acolyte with death spite, despite the doomsayer, simply yeah. because he wants Tice to draw another card. Yeah. yeah, his plan is very, very clearly to win fatigue. via fatigue from this point. It's very smart. But that's gonna freeze up the archmage and the force. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been a bit of a. Weird spot. I mean, there's a lot of fireballs in the hand right now. It doesn't mean it's gonna enough to kill yeah. the opponent, but. I mean, this, it does got, 11 got damage. A lot of work to do. Yeah, a lot of work going there. There's a lot of damage, and he got 18 more. But uh, even if he Alex draws this and is all 18 damage or 24 damage, Hype still would have 15 plus 8. So he'd be at 23 health. Even after all of the Alex Straza plus the, the, the burn he just acquired. So, yeah. and, and Hype is gaining back life every single turn by just armoring up. I mean, the the saving grace might be something like a Malagos if uh, Alex Straza and Archmage get killed by the execute players. But well, it's too late, even actually, then. even for Malagos to have an impact because yeah. Emperor Thorazin was played. The idea of using Malagos is to capitalize on things like, like Frostbolt, Frostbolt and, and Ice Lance yeah. being 1-0 mana, and then you can do 25 damage. Yeah. And uh, what I like is that Hype's play is very clean, always being able to weave in an armor up. Um, if he got a little overambitious, he would have uh, not been able to armor up, and you need to gain back some of that fireball damage. Every three turns, you make up one of those fireballs. I mean, he's, he's only at 62 now, so... so yeah! The danger zone, as, yeah, as, it's he, as like we call it. 11 fireballs the danger needed. Zone. <laughs> Critical Ooh. level is code red! He's below 60. He's 50 now. Nope, 49. 49. Okay, now now we start getting worried. 49. <laughs> I mean, this this is exactly what it must feel like to be extremely wealthy and worried about taxes. It's like, <laughs> oh god, I only have 49 HP. What? It's like, well, calm down. You're still you're still on a very big lead. Ooh, I'm almost Tice, out of Tice cards. Is second to last card. It's Alex Straza. Yes. Yeah, and the shield slam might like with the uh, the added shield slam here. There's no way that Hype's not able to remove everything. Like, it's a really lopsided matchup going into it. We kind of foresaw something akin to this. The only way that Thais would have taken this easily is if the armor smiths were the bottom two. There had never been a single turn where uh, Hype was able to stack up the armor that he did. Well, uh, I think the problem is that if you Alex Straza, then you leave Emperor Thorson up, and then you let your opponent get away with having really cheap cards, but at the same time, Hyped has I don't think that's your problem. Cheap yeah. <laughs> your problem is more like, you see that 23 number over there, over the armor plate? That kind of looks like a problem. Maybe a bit bigger, even. I think if each of your opponent's cards costs 10, you might struggle to win this game from Tyson's position. Okay, that's a... Uh, that's... that's Probably true. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
All right, well, uh, in this case, there is no rush for hype. He's like, my opponent's on fatigue, basically, mm -hmm. next turn. And if the onus is on him to generate some way to kill me, not to mention that he can always put his opponent at one, and then fatigue kills him, or two, Yeah, right, because the ice block won't trigger. So. Exactly. Well, Matt Scientist has played after everything's been drawn, and that's obviously to delay the, uh, the deck fending as much as he can. But... He needs Matt Scientist to... Just start pecking away at the, the, armor. the armor a little bit. The yeah. last best hope, the mad scientist. Oh, yeah, the, the antique heal bot too. Those, he's, he's got a, he's got a, a, a whole you know cadre of bruisers here coming yeah. in. Like. They got a lot of dreams, but uh, unfortunately, they're never gonna come to fruition. Here. Miss Lethal. I believe their dreams will just be dreams. <laughs> at least for today, um, Tice. I mean, I don't even blame him if he concedes here, because he doesn't even have enough damage to win the game. Alex Raza needs to survive, and that already, you know that it won't even be the case at all, because uh, your opponent has a second execute. This is very stubborn. I would have been out of this game, like, five turns ago. Conceded? Yeah, maybe not, like, I don't know, maybe not five turns, but at least two turns. Well, I mean, you do have this small chance that your opponent like executes this instead of Alex Straza and just gets carried away, but you just know that your opponent has way too much. I mean, this realistically also could be uh, a 30 damage kill. Kill, yeah. And then 29, you just, your opponent takes two fatigue damage. Yeah. Anyway. Like, you just put him down to one or two HP. Yeah, and that's it. I think that's what he's going to do. I think yeah. he could do it last turn. I'm not too sure, because that extra double whirlwind from the death by in the whirlwind could have, uh, also worked, I think. Um, but yeah, it's looking grim. Okay, and uh, this second whirlwind should push the Frogging Berserker to 9, or excuse me, 10, hit, hit, uh, 3 HP. Can you put him at 3 HP? Is that the case? If you whirlwind again? I guess you could whirlwind one more time. Yeah. Yeah, you can. And then uh, that's going to put the patron up to 17. You could actually, yeah, the Frogging can go up to 17, attack yeah. now, and then you pass. Right, that's pretty much it then. Looks so, like a game plan. There we go. Unless he pops the block, which would be kind of amusing. Uh -oh. Ooh. Uh-oh. Wait, what? What? He just... Okay. What? That, that is actually not lethal this turn now, but... Well, it doesn't matter. I... It doesn't, I mean... It really doesn't matter. It doesn't this actually is actually extended matter, BM. Right? There's yeah, a lot of BM. You can actually attack with the, with the Berserker first. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it flame strike, and then you eyes block okay, again, so and then you Alex Strauss yourself. I think what happened was uh, Hype was running out of time break based on the rope, and he was just waiting to see the number, but he just didn't have enough time That's to fair. do so. Is there a way for Alex to actually heal him and make him stay in the game? Like, if she attacks three times, is that even enough? There's no, no way. He's, he's, yeah, there's no he's way. That's it. 22. Yeah, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> his, his Alex Strauss needs to burn every yeah, single armor. Never mind. Never and mind. put his opponent at one what, HP. What am I even saying? <laughs> and I'm, then I'm, he can kill him. <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm looking for that glimmer of hope. There's none. Yeah, I mean, he can actually trust himself now. Yeah, but he's still key. gonna die in three turns, right? And then the shield slam. Oh, I mean, here's another thing interesting, too. Hype actually didn't have a way to activate... Okay, he did. But he didn't have a way to activate the execute, so if this shield slam didn't exist, for example, maybe there was an inkling of hope, but even then, Alex Strauss would have to attack for five turns uninterrupted. So, Dice staying in the game, maybe he wants as much information as possible as to what the lineups were, uh, were because we know that Patron sometimes doesn't run the shield slam arsenal, right? Um, yeah. So it's actually pretty nice for him to know that, not that it matters now since yeah. the deck's out. But mm -hmm. This realistically could happen the opposite way too, yeah. because uh, Hype, if he's playing Freeze Mage and, and if Life Coach is playing Patron more, the same thing could happen. Um, so this is not something to be worried about if you're a Nilum fan, because they, this same exact scenario could flip upside down. Yeah. Patron Warrior isn't exactly a deck that's hard pressed to pick up wins in this format either. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's no mech shaman. <laughs> if that's true, it is not. Yeah, I think Temple Storm opened up pretty standard. That's that was the move for a long time to open Patron Warrior in this league because it just had the best win rate mm -hmm. across the board. And then some people started trying to capitalize on that. Like they would throw in the mech shaman, right? Like very beginning, try to catch the patron off guard, ambush them, get the free win. Um, in this case, I really wonder what they were anticipating sending the the freeze, freeze mage first. first. Yeah, I mean, they're trying. To, they're clearly trying to catch something. Everything else, I think, because freeze mage is also one of the most lopsided matchups sometimes. Yeah, free, it, freeze mage is a deck that has very very polarized matchups. You have very good matchups and very bad matchups, like we were talking about before with with patron. And uh, I mean, I do think that that freeze mage is actually probably a deck that has a very high win rate against most of Tempo Storm's lineup. Right. If we exactly. are assuming that that this is Zoo and uh, the Secret Paladin deck, mm -hmm. you, know, you have you have three three strong matchups, and it's also possible that you want to ensure that your freeze mage can run into one of those because if it does end up sort of in your in, in your late uh, stages of your lineup and all that's left is patron warrior and 
The other freeze mage, let's say. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you really yeah. need to try to get those decks into a spot where they can find a win. I agree, I agree. Makes sense, I think. I, I don't know if Tice is going to be coming out again with a freeze mage. There's a chance he does, because again, we're in the same right. scenario where they're trying to isolate that one good matchup, and the earlier you get it, the better off you'll be. And I think that might be where Tebo Storm, like, uh, goes for the cut here. So I think if Tice, if they're expecting Tice to not be afraid, but they still want to pick a deck that's like pretty decent across the board. I think it'd be like Gar's Hunter here. Yeah, I would because agree. Because then you can still grab a win. And if Tice for some reason chooses to play Druid and gets benched, then you can get away with everything Freeze Mage was good again. So you can play the Secret Paladin and the Warlock and just keep winning. And all of a sudden, because of that bench rule, uh, it's a really one side opening for Tempo Storm. And we're, we're thinking very far ahead. It's still 1 0. It's very simple as sending Life Coach's patron out. And then him getting a win, and then Temple Storm is on the same exact footing. There, there are a lot of, of, of different uh, things that you can be thinking about here in terms of deck selection. It, some of it is, okay, I want to try and find a win for, for my weaker deck. Some of it is, okay, well, we think that you think that we think that you think. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One step too far, and then you're back exactly where <laughs> and you were. It, it is, you know, in, in some cases, uh, you know, if, if you think that, that your opponent is, is uh, working on, say, a certain level... You know, you could you could try and go one level past yeah. them, but if they're they're one level past you, you can put yourself into a bad situation. Exactly. Uh, I know that that actually in our match against uh, against Nihilum, uh yesterday, uh, or actually the first match, we actually we actually had had a point when when we sort of uh, ended up getting someone benched because we didn't think that they'd pick the good matchup into that because yeah. they didn't think that we'd play that and and they sort of were one level ahead of us and we got punished for it. Oh, it looks like a hunter from RDU, so that's a, that's the replacement for the Mech Shaman, and uh, Eloise is going to be playing Secret Pally. I think uh, from what we've seen of the matchup, I mean, it's still a pretty recent one. Hunter has a really good chance against it, and that's a rough hand for Eloise. Yeah, she does not have much going on here with just the the triple secrets and Doctor Boom. Uh, I already use is actually quite good as well. Yeah. Uh, the Haunted Creeper is an excellent play off of Coin here. I don't necessarily like abusive. Just because it can just run into a, a, either the noble sacrifice or just a shield mini bot, even like everything, yeah. everything can go wrong for the uh, the two one as tempo play. And the, the glaive zuka is actually also great in, in large part because of cards like shielded mini bot. The the glaive zuka can actually hit take off the shield of the mini bot and then allow the creeper to trade. Does she have to just hero power here? I mean, I can't imagine Noble Sack would make any sense when you've got an Avenge set up. Your turn three could be Noble Sack and uh, and, and the hero, the hero power. power. Eloise's hand here is is quite quite poor. I think that you just have to hero power here because if you do play Noble Sack, I guess you could play Noble Sack and then the uh, the creeper gets triggered, uh, and you you lose your Noble Sack, and then you can still just do the, the same thing next turn right. with the hero power. I I, I I know that's a possibility, but I think it's really weak considering that you're floating mana pretty inefficiently. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing it does do is dump your hand, so that way if you ha if she had divine favor, I think you could argue that if that Doctor Boom, for example, is replaced with divine favor, you can make a case that she wants to get all of her secrets out. But and I like I like this play yeah. of just of just using the hero power, just sacrificing your, your your noble noble sacrifice against a deck like Hunter, where you may run into things like Arkingle that it can protect you from in the later turns of the game. I think is yes. uh, is important. Yeah, Artie's worried about nothing here. I mean, competitive spirit, you just defuse. If it was noble sack, you pop the spider. If it's a mm -hmm. it does nothing. There's a lot of secrets that could happen here, uh, but none of them is particularly problematic. And this is this is the danger of the uh, of the secret paladin deck is sometimes you just draw all your secrets and they're bad cards. You know, these are, uh, they're all, you know, okay individually, but when you draw a handful of one-cost spells, it's going to be difficult for them to be that good. And the Juggler gets picked up. Speaking of that good. Yeah, speaking of being good, <laughs> Juggler looks like a pretty sweet play. Although, you might have to trigger the trap first, see what it is. If it is Noble Sack and you get a trap, um, then that's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. That allows you to use Abusive Sergeant to trade as right, well. Right, exactly. Yeah, it, this is actually a, a pretty powerful turn from RDU. He's able to, to clear the secret, clear both secrets thanks to Abusive, and uh, potentially even set up either Juggler or Glaive Zuka on the uh, on An explosive out. trap in Nardia's deck. That's going to give uh, the mid game to him as well. I mean, even if uh, if it turns out that somehow Eloise is able to get back on the board. I wonder I wonder what mm. his, if, if he's going to play this Juggler here, or I think he must be potentially scared of Consecration, doesn't want to commit too much to the board. Right. I agree with that. I think it's, uh, it's yeah, probably I mean, a decent argument. And he might instead just hero power of Glaive Zuka instead. I don't mind the Glaive Zuka, but you could also hear power for the same effect. I mean, next turn you can always go for the Glaive Zuka by surprise as well. Um, and then the Juggler on the back end, if it's worth it. And then Elise picks up a Haunted Creeper, which she really would have liked to see a few turns ago. 
Yeah, Hunter Creeper on turn two would have been much better, so that way Avenge could have better chances for it to land on a lot of smaller minions for better trading, but yeah. um, as a result, I mean, Hunter Creeper has at least something to play. I don't know if setting up a secret is very strong either because of how many 1-1s there are, so yeah. Double Sacrifice and Capet Spirit don't do much. You can almost argue that the 1-1 token does just as much as Noble Sacrifice, and you get to keep it, but... Dumping your hand, right? The same you argument are again. dumping your hand exactly. doing so. Um, the thing is, like, with the, the amount of secrets that have been picked up by Eloise, that significantly weakens the uh, Mysterious Challenger as well. It's true. So, she's, she's actually gotten both copies of Noble Sacrifice already, right. so it will not pull out one there. Yeah, the magic trigger of, like, everything, like, chaining Noble Sac into Avenge, into Redemption, into Competitive Spirit, that's not possible anymore. I mean, I, I think what Eloise really needs to pick up here is probably Muster for Battle. She needs something yeah. that actually allows her to contest this board and actually generate a board presence of her own to take advantage of Competitive Spirit. Well, well Pile Shredder picked up, which uh, allows RDU to have a pretty dominating presence on the board, except he can't clean up everything. It's going to be a 1-1 so, one -one left, right? Unless he goes for Glade yes. Zuka, then that's a little weaker, though, and it really doesn't it's accomplish much, much. Yeah, It's much weaker because the, the Pilot Shredder is very imposing onto the board. Oh, man, RDU just knows what's up. Yeah, he can also bluff Freezing Trap by attacking into this 1-1. One -one. Makes sense. Eloise will still have no choice but to trigger it and replay the Creeper if there is a Freezing Trap. Ooh. Interesting. There is a challenger, at least, for Eloise. We were talking about how it's not nearly as powerful as it would be if she hadn't right. already picked up a lot of her secrets, but... And she can play one secret on top of that as well. You almost can't play Kings to trade into the Shredder, even though you'd love to, because you expect Freezing Trap. Uh, so that's no, well, now she knows. Now she knows that it's well, not Freezing knows, Trap. Yeah. Or Snake. So she basically knows that's Explosive or Bear, so probably Explosive. Or Misdirection. It's Explosive <coughs> or Bear. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that, that's a dream, Frodo. Yeah. Uh, no beast unable kill command, but there's a quick shot. Uh, you can always use quick shot Glaive Zuka. You face tank five, but I think it's maybe reasonable. Noble sacrifice. Uh, eats the one one. He eats the one one. I guess because he, she doesn't want the five five to die. Yeah. Well, that freezing trap is also putting a dent in uh, Eloise's plan. Right, it but is because. Sure. The secret has been discovered. Freezing Trap's impact a lot weaker. Not to mention, now that the 1-1's one -one been saved, the Freezing Trap gets much weaker as well. So you would maybe just go for Glaive Zuka and Kill Command or Quick Shot? That's a good question, right? I mean, sure, Kill Command can actually uh, deal as much damage now and be more expensive, but it's yep. also more mana efficient and you don't have a beast at the moment. Right. Well, it's part of you may actually be going just for a trade with Shredder. Trade with the Shredder oh, I think maybe you just hits face yeah. because there's a chance you just trade and then pop the one one with whatever comes actually, out. Yeah, now that he played. Oh, him. that's a scary pickup. This is actually you know possibly okay. the best Whirling's Athematic that RDU has had all week. It's still ah, better than Nick Shaman. Man, actually gets to connect. <laughs> oh god, oh, he played it well this time. <laughs> it's true. Both Nova sacrifices have been used, but even then he had the weapon to do so. No more, no more noble sacrifices, you know that, so you're just freezing trap and ignore the board. That sounds yes. like a reasonable plan to me. Freezing trap's just been very powerful against some of these paladins, which is relying on yeah. buffs. And uh, this could even buff the Whirling Zapomatic. <laughs> well, speaking of that, yeah. I think this, uh, the, the power of the Hunter deck, you know, freezing trap against the Hunters is compounded by the fact that they actually are good at denying the early game. So there's never going to be a 1-1 one -one left around uh, very often to tank the freezing trap. And now, uh, yeah, this this freezing trap here is pretty much game over. Yeah, with with the uh, even without the freezing trap. Oh, it's, it's a really bad spot either way. Even without the freezing trap, it was very impossible. It was almost impossible because there's just too much damage and burn in the hand, mm -hmm. and LOE just can't race RDU fast enough. And I think a lot could have done with the early game hand from LOEs, but. Um, also, I mean, RDU also had a decent curve. It just shows the power of Hunter if you can just maintain that curve. You're in a good spot. Yeah. <laughs> so if you Dr. Boom and you attack into a minion and there is a snake trap somehow, then you could have the juggles kill the boom bots and kill two minions, but I don't yep. know if that really helps at all. Oh, it does help. That be, it looks that like it helps. The best chance. Yeah, that may, that may be the best, best play, but it's still horrible. She would still die just the bird from the hand, right. but it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a shot. Yeah. I just got a lot more shots, though. And I think with this freezing trap being revealed, it's it's like good information for 
uh, you know, for her to be able to see, like, okay, like, I just want to know the secret of the, the traps and whatnot, but in this case, it doesn't really truly matter because RDU has secured the victory, and look at that! He chose to place Hunter so their Shaman wins this first game. Oh, well. Yeah. Un unexpected, right? I mean, Thrall is also an orc, but he does not smork nearly as well as Rexar. Not in this game, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Some, sometimes he does, but, like, you don't you don't want Lava Burst, really. It's true. Yeah, maybe, maybe in Heroes of the Storm. He's know. actually really brutal in Heroes. They actually just added Rexar. I know. That's what I, haven't, I haven't actually, play, I haven't actually yeah, played him. Yeah. So. Um, I, I believe that he has an ability that always summons Huffer. Huffer, yeah, he does. I mean, when it summons Huffer, it just kills the entire enemy team. Yeah. Something like that. It, it, just goes, it goes straight, straight to the, the base and it to breaks the core. The core. Yeah, straight yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you're past 20 that, minutes, you win. I hear that Rexar in, in Heroes of the Storm compared to Hearthstone actually has sort of a, a, a personality complex, though. He's, yeah. He says, in, in, yeah. in Hearthstone, he says, I hunt alone, and in, in, in Heroes of the Storm, he actually says, I never hunt alone. I, I have companions, and I just a, love my pets, right? Because he doesn't pick, hunt alone. Pick one. You know, yeah. What do you do? He actually not only says I never hunt alone, but he actually acknowledges the fact that people do say. He says it is said that I hunt alone. But <laughs> I, I never, never hunt, hunt alone. alone. Yeah. Like, well, which, which, which is, is true. It? Is base the place or not? It's uh, Schrodinger's Rexar. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, one one right now for Temple Storm Nylum. Um Pretty decent lead. The hunter there was what I was anticipating Temple Storm to bring out, but now they brought the Paladin. So Eloise is in danger of being benched here if she plays once again. So I have to think that maybe Gara chooses to go out here. Uh, um, with possibly. the Hunter or the Priest? I think the Priest, priest might have too few good matchups to, to yeah. bring out now. What do you think, Killer? I know you play a lot of it. Priest Priest here definitely struggles against the Freeze Mage and Handlock. Uh, it's, I think, actually much closer against Patron than a lot of people seem to think. I mean, we, we actually saw Priest, priest win every yeah. game against Patron so far in this tournament. Yeah. Um, and I actually think it's also stronger against Druid than it used to be, thanks to the fact that, that Dragon Priest is actually a proactive deck that plays a lot of big bodies, which incidentally is actually what Druid traditionally struggles with. The, the games that Priest would win against Druid in old versions were always the uh, Injured Blade Master into Circle of Healing draws, and more of the Priest draws in Dragon Priest really just look like it. They're similar. Yeah, they're kind of like that. Yeah, Valence Chosen also helps yeah, a lot. Yeah, Agent to Valence Chosen, that's better than an Injured Blade Master. It's, it's huge. You know, it's uh, so... I, I think that, that the, the Priest has basically a couple of reasonable matchups and one bad one, and this is or two bad ones, and this is one of them. This, this is a is... horrible matchup for Gara, but uh, there's a chance that, you know, the, the Priest can zoo down the mage. It happens sometimes, you just get a perfect curve with an Azure Drake on the back end. You just start with a whelp into the Wormist Agent, and it, uh, you get away with it. It's it's a very tough matchup. To yeah. The, the, the Priest deck is really all about generating a powerful board state, and with specifically the Frost Nova Doomsayer, uh, that is where the, the uh, Freeze Mage is able to take out even the really high health minions that might be able to live through Flame Strike or Blizzard. Uh, one of the things that the Priest deck can do to have a better chance in this matchup is play with Shadow Word Pain, because the ability to actually remove Doomsayer from the board is a very big deal. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Shadow Word Pains, actually, since a lot of people run at least one Shrink Miser, mm -hmm. sometimes two. Uh, it works with Cabal, works with the Shadow Word Pain, so I wouldn't be surprised if Gar played it. Yeah, I, I, I believe we actually saw Smite out of Gara's deck earlier in the weekend. Uh, yeah. it's, it's possible that he's changed his, his lineup, though uh, I, I know that he felt quite confident in, in his deck choices uh, from the conversations we had this weekend. We actually played the same lineup. We played yeah. Dragon Priest and Hunter, so we're both like, man, great decks. <laughs> but for, for Holy Smite to work in Dragon Priest, doesn't the early game already accomplish that in a way, and you don't need to double dip in the... Uh... Holy Smite does a couple of things. You actually have uh, both Azure Drake and Valence shows ah, that give point. you spell damage, yep. so you can actually get better value out of Holy Smite than you would. <laughs> Pronouns like... I was, getting, I was getting ready for my casting uh, position. Oh yeah, casting is good. So anyway... Uh... We're resident sleeping for real. You guys are you have nothing on us. You don't know anything Anything about resident sleeping, <laughs> but but yeah. So uh, Holy Smite also worked quite well with Vulgent, which is yeah. uh, one of the best ways for priests to deal with sometimes something like a Doomsayer. Holy Smite Vulgent can actually deal with Doomsayer uh, at least slightly off curve, um, as well as Ysera, which is a very powerful card in the mirror match. Yeah, the only way you really have to deal with it is like Shrinkmeister Cabal and Vulgent. Holy Smite would actually give you an extra out. So you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Uh, do you play Holy Smite in your Dragon Priest? At least Maybe. the one that we saw that we saw earlier. <laughs> uh, I was not playing it before. No. Okay, I did have Shadowward Pain. Though. Yeah, that's what I remember. I remember Shadowward Pain uh, quite vividly. It actually did a lot of work in uh, two of the games that could we saw you, you play. Could you actually tell me thirty cards for thirty cards? What's in your Priest list deck right now that I played before? Yeah, you know, just like 
right now. That I'm play- and that I'm now playing? No, yeah. I, I won't tell you. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you'll be able to, right? Damn. Okay, well. I believe... Oh! You, you, you caught me. <laughs> so this is actually uh, an unusual decision on Gara's part to include the Confessor Peltrus. He has a, a very late-game focused Dragon Priest deck, uh, which maybe maybe that's a, uh, a nod toward how strong he actually feels uh, the Priest deck is, because having more late-game focused cards is, is more likely to actually help win those matchups. But here... This is not what he's looking for. Gara yeah. in this matchup really wants to have, you know, Warm Rest Agent into Dark Cultist into you know, Glide Guardian and just yeah. keep going from there with the perfect curve. But uh, it's actually possible that Thais as a Mad Scientist are going to be able to pack in quite a punch before they're dealt with based on the hand Gara has. Yeah, I mean, Mad Scientist is actually a card that is, is, is pretty important for Mage decks to get down in the early game against yeah. Priest because of Cabal Shadow Priest. It's uh, it's one of the the only cards that in many many Mage decks, or at least in, in Mage decks like this, that uh, are particularly vulnerable to Cabal Shadow Priest. You could always take a Doomsayer, but that never works out well. Yeah. The Doomsayer is just so that you can stall for one more turn, but uh, I've seen Kalanta do it one time, and even then it was like a very risky play. I mean, and this does give Gara the ability to at least draw one card off of his his. Uh, it could his be the Holy Smite, card. right? That we're talking about. He that, could that pick up a Holy Smite. Yeah, but he has Vulgin now, so that's an important keep for him to use against big minions if he doesn't have Shadow Word Death. Right now, Gara does, just doesn't have a hand that does anything. Is the problem though? I mean, he he needs to actually just be trying to find stuff. You know, he he would he would much prefer to actually just get a couple card draws off of the Northshire Cleric. Uh, so he can dig into minions he can actually play. Because right now, he just has a very reactive hand, and that's really not what you want in this matchup. Yeah. Dice is also thinning the deck. He's already got two secrets in hand, which is maybe a little unfortunate, because that's maybe not what you want to pick up this early. But... It's pretty bad. All right, well, wh- this is a bad matchup to start, and Gara's draw has been horrific. I mean, Gara told me that he thinks Dragon Priest is the best deck in the game. I, I actually think that Dra- in this particular six-deck metagame, like the the uh, the way that it, it breaks down, I actually do think Dragon Priest is the strongest deck. So we know your lineup. You have like six Dragon Priests. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if if I could, I would. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you would. I don't know about your teammates though, but yeah, definitely. I'm happy to see the Priest is actually back on the map as opposed oh, to just being completely. There it is. Okay, uh, I figured it out. Confess the pair just with we'll summon Ragnaros. Ooh, that that's, would be that's a crazy swing. How you win. Again. Yeah, that's, that's your plan. All right, I like it. What about Trogzor? <laughs> uh, that Ragnaros is actually I think Ragnaros more. is probably better it's than like Trogzor. Probably better. Oh, because... come on. Trogzor is cool. Trogzor, Trogzor is cool. That's yeah. true. Especially against Freeze Mage. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I think... Uh... Professor Pelagius might realistically be his win condition. Yeah, I mean, I actually think that, particularly given the way that this game has progressed, right. the the way that he can potentially win this game is in fact Confessor Peltras. Right, and it's not even just Ragnaros. There's like different things that could threaten it as well, like just mm-hmm. big minions that you have to constantly freeze. And if your opponent can't remove it, um, like even if it's like Baron Geddon, he just Vulgin that, yeah, like the Doomsayer, and then the Doomsayer just gets killed by Baron. Ooh, so the, the, Three secrets are in the Thais's hand. We have to maybe highlight this a bit. Not that they're absolutely bad, but if they don't get triggered, that clogs up the hand quite substantially. Uh, I think he's anticipating if it's worth playing the uh, Doomsayer. He says Gar's been having very awkward turns. He must have really expensive minions. And if I can get ahead of it, maybe he has a Cabal Shadow. Yeah, that's risky. Yeah, Doomsayer yeah. actually prevents. Gara from playing Cabal, uh, Cabal Shadow Priest this As turn. a Yeti, right? right. Yeah. Right. Oh. Hey, there it is! Speaking of the devil, so if he had Holy Smite here, he would actually be okay. Because he could uh, use Vulgin with Holy Smite to get yeah. rid of it. And because you have two deaths, you know, you can deal with Alex. Um, you can deal with uh, Archmage. Maybe not the Emperor, but... It's interesting. I mean, what Cabal Shadow Priest effectively does by stealing Doomsayer is it gives your minions on board one more turn, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, for example, if you have Emperor Thorson, you uh, and you felt like you needed one more turn of Thoris, and you can steal the, the Doomsayer. But it doesn't actually... Would, would it? Really? Because it would trigger at the start of your next turn. Yeah. So it, would, thing... it wouldn't trigger on the Mage's turn, it triggered on your turn, so you get one more turn. Okay, well, at the end of his turn, nothing Or like, I don't know, there's different... Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure I, what's I happening. Guess, it, I guess I'm, ta- I'm talking about, like, that's the kind of... Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, one thing it actually would do here, potentially, is prevent Tice from playing his own Emperor Tharson and getting more than one trigger. He could actually... That's, that's the reason why you would play He could actually potentially play. play his Cabal Shadow oh, Priest yeah. here, take the Doomsayer, Tice is going into turn six, so it does prevent Tice from perhaps making what would be Actually, a very efficient right, right. play with Blue Tharson. Yeah, that's, that's a much better team than Tharson. I'm sure that's what you meant, though. And it actually, this is actually uh, the play that Gara makes. Well, actually, I, I meant that 
whatever you have on board. <laughs> Tyson, Tyson's very confused by this. He's like, why would you do that? And Agar's like, I'm on another level, man. <laughs> it's, it's particularly amusing because Tyson immediately drew Acolyte of Pain, which is actually a fantastic target. <laughs> Yeah, so this stalls out Tysus' turn. Yeah, a lot. And it actually gives Gar the opportunity to be a little proactive with the, God forbid, Twilight Whelp. Uh, crazy Boom. play there. Get in there. Yeah. Oh, oh he had the really Holy Smite. Crazy there for Gar. He's got all the removal in the world. That's out of fireball range. I, you have to I like ping. this. Yeah, I like this Valence chosen immediately. Uh, getting your minions big enough to be able to survive the direct damage spells, AOE effects from Freeze Mage is pretty important. You're not going to get Valence value by like surprising them and killing a minion. It's mm -hmm. just it's just not the dynamic. Surprising a Freeze Mage. That's yeah. a fun ah, one. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, surprising a Freeze Mage is like, oh, I play a minion. What do you do? And this is actually slightly awkward for Gara here because he did just use his Cabal Shadow Priest for the kind of tricky try and stop your Emperor turn play. Yeah. Uh, and now he he is facing down this Acolyte of Pain, which we would really love to see. Hey, you could you could heal it. Holy smite. No, you can't. You have to Light Bomb now. And then you attack the Acolyte, and he mills a card. You don't have to do that. Okay. I thought Nor you, should you. I thought you had to. Mill a card is... And actually, casting Light Bomb right. does two damage because he has Valence chosen. Oh, you're right. So you'd have to heal it first. It's true. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm horrible. doesn't feel worth it at that stage. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Mill it, it's flashy. It yeah. is one of the most overrated things. It really yeah, is. Yeah, I guess it's, it's, actually, it's actually... <laughs> if you mill two, I could see the reasoning, but one is absolutely not worth it. Because he's going to draw the card anyway, for the most part. I mean, it is it is true that Gara is in an a really bad yeah. position here, and that maybe his best road to victory could possibly be, I'm just going to hope that I hit your Antonitis and you can't kill me, or whatever it is. So, I think... If he plays the Confessor Palefist, he's gonna like see if his opponent can remove it. And then like if he does, then Yasera can come down. Oh man, that would be such a crazy all in. But the know, thing I... is, passing with six mana onto your opponent is Whoa. just really ambitious. I would have played Vulgin over this. <laughs> that was ambitious. Yeah, it's actually wow. it's actually gonna work out in this case because pretty sad uh, because I think Confessor Pedro could have had awesome potential. Now Confessor Pedro might summon Nat Piggle, and um, <laughs> we would have actually done <laughs> or Lord Walker Cho, and that would yeah, have been amazing. Yeah, but Lord Walker Cho is, is somewhat okay for Freeze Mage. But yeah, you claw like, their hand and they can you, never. They they usually can't really benefit. Like you give them Blizzard, it's like oh you're not Blizzard anything on my board. It's fine. Um, use Frost Nobs, like, okay, th those things don't really matter as much. What really does matter is, like, Karmic Ice Block. That would be the big Lord Walker Show moment. Yeah, you give it to the, the, the Priest. There will be Ooh. a Nova. Is he just gonna let that? Labor Ice Lance hit. Oh, he goes for gonna the use the Frost Nova instead. Alright. Now you can't play Sarah. Unless you go Vulgin Holy Smite, which he might actually consider. I mean, it's seven health on Vulgin, so that's yeah. a really big deal. No, it's it's a huge deal. He does have double death in his hand al already, so he has the ability to deal yeah. with both Antonitis and Alexstrasza or Emperor, yeah. um, and and then just the, the ability to actually generate a meaningful board presence, especially against the second Doomsayer here. You know, you now don't have to worry about your board getting cleared when it does contain significant number of high uh, health minions. So you're playing into Flame Strike really harshly here. Uh, healing the Whelp might have been potentially a bit more safe against Flame Strike because it's just just allowed Confessor Peltris to to, to, yeah. to stay up. Like if he had Flame Strike, he would cast Flame Strike last turn. If you, if you was think, it good enough? It would have killed. Yeah. It would have killed Confessor Peltris. Confessor Peltris and the. And he would have been able. To, he would have been able to save Frost Nova and Doomsayer. So I think that I think that you are in a position where you you don't expect Tys to have Flame Strike unless he just drew it this turn. Does, yeah, that makes sense. Does Tys have enough to just Alex Traza offensively at all? With the two eyes block, with the the eyes block and the ice bear on the back end, maybe. Um, I mean, he's gonna put his opponent in a really weird spot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The thing is, how like you might just get beat down past this point because that's a lot of damage on the priest side, even though it doesn't really kill you. Uh, might be enough to be. I think the thing is that there's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of threat coming out on the other side when you have that much health. But the problem is, I don't think you have the guaranteed follow-up of damage, so I don't feel as comfortable. Yeah, if you had like a few options. fireballs from Archmage prior to that, maybe you'd consider it. Uh, and usually that's the way it goes, right? Sure. Oh, I like Zisera. He's actually really dangerous for Tice. This feels or like do an you, I feel like to Nova. Play I, yeah, I, 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 like, but, I like Nova here. I think yeah. it, it manages to preserve the health of of all your minions. You can get multiple minions out of range of at least Flame Strike by itself. 
Um, you deal three, so nothing to hate there. I guess, I guess if you if you Nova, yeah, you can Nova and heal your whelp, and none of your minions are vulnerable to flame strike. Other than, other than the well, two no, of the, your, your two big minions. The Blackwing technician is mostly that, yeah, just kind of a sidekick that doesn't do anything. Like you don't expect it to do anything this game. Because uh, if Flame Strike hits, right, it just gets banged. So yeah, she's got her work to do. Leave her alone. We gotta, yeah. we gotta deal with keeping the other ones alive. Right, so At the same time, I can understand that Yasser can never be played if the next turn is Alex Straza. That's true. You 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 absolutely. Oh, and this is, I could and see the Alex Straza though. might just come down here because of the sp second fireball pickup. Yeah, yeah makes a, a lot of damage real fast. Yeah. That's almost going to be impossible to come back from. Um, Actually, double almost. Nova is one of the ways you can uh, you can stay out of reach. Because the, the single bit of healing you're getting from your heal bar is often not right. enough. Uh, but that's actually... There's a possibility, right? He's going to be... I think you need to... You, you want to you Nova heal this turn? Right, no choice. Because you, you, need to, you need to get as, as much value out of your hero power as you can. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately for Gara, uh, Holy Nova doesn't actually... Or, or spell power doesn't actually affect the healing of, uh, of, mm -hmm. of spells. It only affects the damage portion. So while Holy Nova will deal three damage, we'll only heal Gara for two, despite the Valence chosen. Well, Nova heal looks like the only play anyway. Um, I mean, that that will put him to seventeen, but he is he is facing potentially fireball, fireball, you know, frostbolt, and then there's the answer. It could be Antonidas ice block or uh, it's right. The second ice block is pretty key. Yeah, the ice block is, is incredibly important because yeah. it gives him another turn with Antonidas getting a fireball. Yeah, do you go arc mage ice barrier, or do you just unleash the fireballs and play the ice barrier later? Oh, Ooh, another frostbolt. But there, there's no cost reduction and no ice lances. Uh, so Tice can actually only play a single card if he does play Archmage Antonidas. So he could actually win by just going Fireball, Fireball, Frostbolt, Frostbolt, Hero Power on the following turn. But that assumes that Gar has no more healing left, um, and that lets Gar take the initiative on popping the block. And if he's got another Nova, then maybe you die. It's probably better to actually Fireball twice and ping the face. So then that way you can the use the two Frostbolts next turn and ping. He's going for it. Gara knows that there's no way he lives. Uh, the only exception is if you anticipate you need Antonidas next turn. But I think I like this better. Ooh, fireball ping barrier. Okay, so that gives him Fireball, Frostbolt, Frostbolt. Yeah, and Archmage Ice Block turn. is a backup plan. Yeah, yeah, and that is what? It's 12, 13. It's 13. not quite enough to actually beat the uh, the Holy Nova in a single turn. Wait, uh, is that really chosen? Like, the extra damage he needs? Yeah, with Nightmare, I think it might be. That's an extra 7 damage he's getting. With Nova Heal, Six, he's actually eight. out of reach of lethal. Uh, 14, 14 24. 24. He's too off. Actually, Nova pops it. No, it's popped. Yeah, it's popped. It's popped. And now Thais is going to have to... It's a really to... big deal. Yeah. yeah he's going to have to Ice Block again. But uh, Archmage Ice Block just kind of... Yeah, but that means he's not doing damage. Yeah, but then the ice block gets popped and no, no, then Gar loses. Uh, but then Gar heals back up to 16, so he can't actually 15 him in one turn. Is he going to heal up to 15? He's going to heal up to 14, 14 and then, and then 16. Yeah, you're right. 16. He's going to kill Antonidas, pop the ice block, and so what Tice needs right now is Ice Lance? Yeah, that would do it. The second like, Ice Lance. Like There's another one, lance. I think. Yeah. Good That's point. The key here. Uh, wow. uh, that no, it's too expensive. Gotta go for that Archmage. Not to mention it can't hit too many enough minions. You played around Cone of Cold by having the Nightmare Yeah, minion around the Nightmare between... on the Blackwing deck. You're denying the minions from attacking. If that's in... Uh... That's pretty smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know that's all think, planned. I think it coincidentally happened to be on the least uh, impactful Fox. minion to die, but... It looks great. He played around Cone of Cold. Gar, best priest. <laughs> oh yeah, he's wow. gonna have to change okay. his name. So Tice is also in a situation where he has to think. Okay, if I, if I put Antonidas Fireball, is that even or Antonidas Ice Block? Does that even give me a chance? But maybe I Ice Block and just like Fireball, Frostbolt, Ping, and then hope I draw Ice Lands and I play Accolade or something like that. That's also an opportunity for him because he's maybe he's realizing that Antonidas is just too slow, and he has to try to go for ways to win the game. So if he plays Acolyte, he might just Frostbolt the face and ping that, and then put his down, put him down to um, eleven right 11. now. Oh, yeah. But it's, but he needs like the last Ice Lance right to win. Uh, but he's got like what? A f he don't, he can't have that many cards left after all the draw we saw. I mean, he was... if Gara wins uh... this, this is gonna be like almost a first for me because honestly, the amount of times I've seen Priest win this matchup is. I mean, it's ridiculously low. Okay. That's the the, the Blackwing Creeper is actually not irrelevant too, because even if Tice is able to to nullify Gara's creature based offense, Corruptor can potentially just finish him off. 
Right, that's that's pretty big, in fact. Damage. Nightmare Shadow or Dead the Acolyte to deny the draw. That's definitely the play, Ooh, right? Fancy. That is that's yeah. pretty fancy. You kinda I have like to it, do it. Like yeah. It. Gara made that play with his pinky extended. <laughs> While drinking what? Plenty of drink. And he, yeah, yeah, he wants to play a fourth minion here because that does Some give him four here. threats okay. against Cone of Cold. So <laughs> yeah. even even if uh, Tice does have the Cone of Cold, he can't actually neutralize everything. He's now gone through both Ice Blocks, and Tice is at two. It's, the, it's the Ice Lance or Bust? And Ysera Awakens! Ysera Awakens! Ice Lance or Bust? Uh-oh. No, it's not a, now he doesn't have enough mana? No, he, he would have exactly, oh, exactly, exactly enough. enough mana. Exactly enough. He One has to play Ice Lance right now. Do it, Tice. Just yeah, that beats 13 damage. It's a do 50, it! 50, 50, 50, 50. 50. Wow. It's more. Is, he's got to do it. <laughs> he knows there's a chance. Yeah. He can realistically pick up. And look things. at Gara's face. He's just, he's just pranked. Oh! Is. The draw. There it is. It is exactly the card he needs. Exactly kills Gara from. Wow. A. a Terrible spot in, a, in, a, in an incredibly close game. Such yeah. a great play from Gara, though. Yeah. Like, this entire game was navigated Oof. really well by him. This might be a loss, but it's a win in my heart. I, I was I was really impressed by by how Gara navigated that game. He, right. he really did put himself in a position to yeah. win a very very difficult matchup. I mean, Tice Tice struggled early without really finding the you know, draw. Too much card draw. Yeah. Right. He, he was able to pick up uh, he was able to pick up that arcane intellect really really late on. S same thing with uh, the acolytes of pain. So he wasn't able to really assemble the critical mass of burn that he needed after that Alexstrasza, but. Finally, at the last possible moment, was able to pick up the Ice Lance. Yeah, that was really close. I feel so short again. I'm pretty hyped. Uh, a, pr a pretty... <laughs> right, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Okay, well, I'll go like this. Oh, you, can, you can stand. Like, I, I don't mind. I'm happy to look up to everyone. I look up to so many people. All right. To Mordor! <laughs> sure, oh, Frodo. Um, I can carry you on my back. God, kill you me probably now. could. I'm I'm pretty light. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, I'm only like you know 65 kilos or something like that. No, that's fine. I mean, I can carry you, dude. We're in the, we're in America. I was trying to convert it for our Canadian brother. <laughs> well, uh, that's a pretty crushing loss for Gara. Um, as you can see, the him Temple Storm trying to communicate with Eloise. I can read now. this. It says, Gara, how did you lose this game? Learn to not get ice lands in the face. Wow. Yeah. Man. And uh, so it, it's just like a really tough position to be in for sure. Um, not really looking at like the whole big picture though is um, you know I don't I don't know if Gara can queue up again immediately because I thought that was one of the opportunities that maybe the priest or the hunter could play, but then they'd be in danger of being benched. What about hunter? If he goes out with it, is there something that punishes him severely? Patron perhaps uh, might be a bit of a punish if life coach decides to go with it. I mean, Patron is not really a that, bad matchup yeah, for, exactly. for Hunter. Gar is actually playing a, a more of a face style of Hunter from what I, I, I've seen uh, of his deck, and, which which actually is a bit worse against Patron. But he yeah. does have, at least previously, he played Arcane Golem, which compared to Wolf Rider, which is another one of the choices in those decks for this uh, the charge minion slot, uh, is substantially better against Patron because it's two health. He plays Wolf Rider as well. I remember uh, Horse Rider, sorry, not Wolf Rider. The Horse Rider was actually a tech that I think we've seen in Gara's Hunter Ga last it, time. Was it Gara who had, yeah, who had pretty, pretty I may, I may be getting had, it backwards. He had the Virgin had... Horse Rider. Right. Please. Okay, okay. So it was, uh, was uh, Ecop who had Arcane Golem. Yeah, yes. that, that, that sounds e ish right? That sounds totally e ish Why does that sound e -cop? I don't know, it sounds aggressive. Okay, fair I would I would say that, that aggressive accurately describes e -cop, both in and out of game sometimes. But... Sure, sure. <laughs> Sorry, right. uh, don't punch you me. You are not incorrect. So... I think this is a good opportunity to send a life coach. I think um, yeah. one win across each member here is really good to keep your options flexible. Um, I'd be surprised if Tice like, re-queued up with Druid, but at the same time, I wouldn't hate it either, considering that there's pretty decent matches across the board. Yeah, Freeze Mage is also a good thing to target. Hyped has eventually to win with Freeze Mage, and it's looking like with the uh, the Secret Paladin still up, you might want to wait. Uh, there's still a patron, though. How's Handlock Freeze Mage? I remember Freeze Mage used to be really good against it, because um, you could basically just kill them while they tap. Mm -hmm. um, it's, so, it's not a matchup I'm particularly depends. familiar with. Yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult based off of the hand of... Um, the war Warlock player, because if you have a big threat to play, then they can't remove it. Like, one Firebolt doesn't kill Twilight Drake or a, a Giant. And so if you can get those threats out early, it's um, it's difficult. Also, Handlock got better against Freeze Mage with the advent of Malganus. Uh, you can always time it. And if they have... I don't, I don't think they're running both of as often. They used to run both of and Systematically, then yeah. And then that was like very difficult, but if they're not running Lotheb, then your Lotheb turn is the Malganus. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's gotten better, but at the same time, it's still a little tricky. 
And it looks like we have Life Coach with Warrior against Eloise with Warlock. She plays a lot of Zoo, but I've seen her play Handlock as well. So, She's played both. Yeah, yeah as as so as it's as hard as to, as to as pin as her as on as either archetype, if, definitely. Uh, but Handlock would be the good pick. I mean, if, if it is Handlock, that's a, that's a good choice. I would lean towards Zoo, just right. because I think it's stronger in the six-deck format here. Because Zoo is very good at punishing decks. Um, like, like Mech Shaman. Shaman. <laughs> right. But oh, like it, there's yeah. no more of those. We, yeah. like, but it, we've culled those from the field. The concept is very good at punishing aggro decks while still being fast itself. And mm -hmm. it's also still reasonable against Patron Warrior. It's not amazing. I think um, it still gives you a pretty good shot. So, yeah, it's think, most like the Zoo, in fact. Yeah, You're right. No argument there. Um, so the thing, the problem here is Life Coach has uh, he loses an edge that he has on Life Play, where he can intimidate his opponents from across the the room with a stare. But now that she's uh, she's not playing from the room, um, oh, Life Coach is free to talk as much as he wants. He can even say his <laughs> entire hand, and she won't hear. That's a good point. Yeah, you could say exact three cards that he has, and she wouldn't be able to. To know otherwise. Life Coach is certainly one of the, the most intense and animated players. I mean, right. Just look at him just it's the he's, he's talking through you know his uh, probably the next twelve turns of the game and figuring out what's going to happen. Poker does that to you, man. It's it's true. It does. Know? And and we, when we were discussing you know the the thinking on various levels uh, as That's far theory as theory of mind, is right? Concerned. Basic yeah, theory uh, of mind and poker. It's, it's very important to 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 you know think about okay, well well what level is my opponent on? Yeah. And what when we when we were sort of thinking about it, it's like well we're playing against Life Coach who is a very successful retired professional poker player maybe we shouldn't be trying to level them <laughs> well um good start from eloise it's actually an excellent hand from both players here right the uh, i like the fire win axe more than i like uh maybe the well in here it's true i mean the fire works is much more important particularly in this matchup uh than basically any of the cards that life which has but he does have death bite which yeah. is just right. the best card in the deck in general in the game it could be the best card in the game it's true well if it's the best card in the best deck in the game then it's it, it could be the best card the best, the best card. card in the game yeah. it depends how you think about these things because contextual you know contextually there there are some cards that would be it's pretty bad in aggro value right? all right i heard you like flame imps yeah so i put a flame imp in your flame imp, so you can <laughs> flame imp. well it will get one of them will get stopped by unstable ghoul yeah but well, it is true it's still but one of them won't one of them won't and uh, if you rely on an Acolyte, I mean, one Flame Imp could get in six damage, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as her picking up a way to uh, circumnavigate the Unstable Ghoul through the Iron Beak Owl. But there's a there's a, a something to be said though about the the whirlwind life coach holding on to because if Eloise decides to play the double minion turn that she has next turn, which I think she will, uh, the whirlwind will be great value. It'll kill a flame imp and kill the abusive sergeant, and that's going to give him time to get to that turn four death's bite, where cleaning up everything is going to get a lot easier unless Eloise picked up something crazy. Yeah, I mean one of the great things about these cards like Unstable Ghoul and Whirlwind in the Patron uh, Warrior deck is that not only are they they combo pieces that allow you to sort of have these incredibly powerful burst combos late in the game, but they're actually great interactive cards against aggressive decks. Right. You know, we, we see the Unstable Ghoul come down, uh, trade off with one of these Flame Imps, barring a uh, Iron Beak Owl, which is not there. Uh, and, uh, Defend of Argus will come in handy later, but there might not even be a board to use it on by then. She might have to tap on turn three. There's a good chance that that will happen. Uh, well, with Depend Dr. Boom in the deck, I anticipate that Eloise curves out to the Malganus. Right. So... You're probably correct. Uh, however, it's easy to pick up a three drop. There are a reasonable amount of three. Uh, Two three and less. Yeah, three and less. Yeah, definitely. You can get knife juggler. You can get, um, you know, the Ruby egg that we saw. The imp gang boss. It's not unheard of. So, is there ever an argument for playing the acolyte just straight up? Oh, well, the armor smith looks like it's too good to pass here. Never mind. I was gonna say, is there ever an argument to play a three drop and lose it to the M just to draw? Because uh, in effect, it still kills one minion. You're just not getting the extra uh, value you might like out of it. The thing about the Armorsmith is that it doesn't impact the board very much. And you, by playing the Acolyte, you like force your opponent to attack into, into it. it yeah. And then you can save Whirlwind for something else. And then Death Spite gives you the ability to clear the following With turns. With a double Whirlwind, yeah. Without giving up much. He's already used the Abusive Sergeant. Um, and you don't get punished by the, the Defender of Argus yet. So there is a case for the Acolyte. I think it's really just because the double whirlwind gives you probably a lot, uh, a lot more wiggle room. But then again, you know, you're running the Defender of Argus and it's starting to look a little bit more dangerous. It's just the best board tempo, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, 
get you don't lose too much. Like the acolyte can give you more than one draw, right? Yeah. On turn five, if you actually play it properly, it, it, which he is. So this is a pretty. I don't want to say weak turn because it is a creeper. It is something playable, but at the same time, it's also something that dies very easily to what the warrior tends to play. Especially since it's been played before the weapon. Yeah, in the, in the the sort of mid to late turns of the game, Creeper can actually just be a liability because yeah. of how how poorly it matches up against cards like uh, Grim Patron and Acolyte of Pain. What now? Well, do you play the Gnomish Inventor? I think the Death Bite is too good to develop now that you have the Acolyte on turn five with uh, with something else to play. Possibly even a Battle Rage pickup. It does um, trade with the board at the moment. That's what's tempting about it. Yeah. The Death Spite does prepare you better, and it plays around Defender of Argus. It, it, it does. Defender of Argus is one of the, the cards that, uh, that Eloise could play on this board that would actually make her minions into real threats. Uh, and if, if uh, Life Coach just played the Novish Inventor here, you know, she could potentially actually contest his, his entire board with, uh, with what she has in play. Well, let's see what Life Coach wants to do. He's still making up his mind, it seems. I like the Death Bite a lot, but when do I not? I mean, it's kind of it's kind of an easy play that it, just works well. It sets up the following turn, too. You have right. Acolyte, you can draw off of it, and you're still also playing around Defender of Argus. It, it plays around the most things effectively. That's what it essentially does. Yeah, I like Death Bite there for sure. It's just It, it sets you up very powerfully for future turns. Uh, it does clear uh, you know at least one of the, the, the small threats off the board, uh, and... It, it also, you can potentially enable card draw with Acolyte of Pain next turn as well. So, Creeper tap, or would you ever defend of Argus a one Creeper to attack into the... Uh... It's not very it's, strong. Yeah, yeah it's, it's super weak, especially against the it Death Spite. It does so little. The tap is so much more valuable. Mm -hmm. Oh. Three card is tap. pretty decent, but... There's no Execute yet, so that's one thing. That's it might true. get picked up pretty quickly, though. I guess I, I didn't really anticipate it coming out for the next turn. Yeah, probably not. Now you gotta remember which creeper came to play first. The um, one on the right, I think. Yeah, the one on the right, so... I hope Life Coach kept track. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I was, well, I was, just, I was just gonna say, it's actually it's actually quite relevant here if you're gonna use your Death Spite, but... I think you might Are you using your Death Spite, though? I don't know that you are. Yeah, because, I mean, the 2-4 It looks will... like he's actually he's thinking, okay, he's like... <laughs> Uh, I don't remember which spider came in. She probably puts it, you know, by default on the left. Yeah, so. he's hovering over the right one. A uh, little circle shows that he's hovering his mouse over a it. Circle? What? Uh, well, it's a little well, white, little white, white border, outline. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh, there. I saw that one. Right. Left. You can see it sometimes. All right. So I'll he's just gonna try to pop it first. Though. He's like, you know what? I'm not gonna bother with this. Let him mm -hmm. do it. Uh, but that defense of Argus is exactly what we're talking about. You know, it turns the board into a threat. You might want to kill the armor smith here. Uh, by smashing with the spiders, but the thing is, there's a good likelihood the life coach uh, ends up trading it away or dies to the death bite after a trade. It's interesting here. I mean, you you don't really want to put both your spiders in the position to get popped as well, just because of, you, know, you don't want the the actual the one, uh, yeah. spider links to die. You know which one it is. Hmm? Like, I mean, I always knows which one it is. You'd hope so. Die. Yeah. So this if is she the sort actually, of thing that I would lose track of. Yeah. If she tones up the one that's not, if she just defends with Argus one of them, then she actually has a chance to just save the other one, and the mm -hmm. spider links for both will spawn. Yeah, she could she could attack with, with the one that's been damaged already. She could potentially attack that into the armor smith, play the defender of Argus between one of the spider links and the, the, uh, other. the healthy uh, spectral spider, and actually kill uh, the the armor smith this turn and have uh, two. One was left over after the death bite pops. All right, she's gonna go for the straightforward play and just keep both spiders alive uh, to kill the armor smith. And life coach, I think, is still in a very commanding position. Yeah, now he's, like, he's oh. in a position to wipe the board, basically almost. Uh, yeah, just he... use inner rage. Um, slam. So what you can do is play the acolyte, uh, use inner rage on a two one, hit the two two, and then clear the board of uh, everything. Uh, yeah, I mean, and then draw a card. It's hard not to do that, to make that play, I think. Like, the slam also gives you an extra card, and you can still wipe the same board. The slam only enables him to kill hit the, defender. the face. Kill no, the defender. Yeah, kill the defender and hit the face with the death spite instead, but I think that you're okay taking this damage. I think his priority is valuing, like, what's the least damage he can take. Which one is the sp He, I don't know if he knows which spider it is still. He, he's got this it, grin it, on his face, like, I'm not too sure. Well, it doesn't even really matter. With the whirlwind effect, yeah. Yeah, because now he can just collide Ooh. into stuff and use inner rage to guarantee it. If he remembers, then he doesn't have to. He can even just hit. 
Wait. He has absolutely no idea. Oh no, he's picking the wrong one, I think. <laughs> uh oh, wait, 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 wait. Life wait, coach. No. Is that the right one? I don't think I, it is. I don't know. I don't think. Is it? And... No, no, it wasn't. Life coach. This is amazing. No. <laughs> well, unless he wanted to challenge the. the... No! Oh punished. my god, punished really hard Super here. Super punished. Wow. That's actually, that's that's actually a crazy that's actually punish. Because not only does this spider uh, get Wow, but the egg's the name. Yeah, it survives. Egg the egg gets buffed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, life coach. Oh boy. All right, well, I mean, the game He's is still, still fine, far right? from over. Yeah, I mean, you just look at that patron, the death bite, the woe, and the inner rage, and you're thinking to yourself, Welp. It's not over yet. Not well, by a long shot. It, it was a situation where if Eloise had no defender targets, what yeah. was she forced to do? Play Doomguard? Doom guard? Yeah. She would have been in big trouble. Um, or even tap with the egg, right? So that, like, that's, that's what she would have to do. Um, Life Coach gave her an opening by doing this. So I really like just playing Deathbite. It's so... I mean, you can always just armor up shield slam if you feel like that's ever relevant here but you have the shield box it's hard to justify doing that just yet the shield block here gives you know gives you a draw I, but you do have shield slam so keeping you might it, want to keep it yeah. together um you can but at the same time i play that's bite every day here consider me uh old-fashioned but i i can play that's bite i played that's bite in patron yeah he, he's at he's at a good enough life i think yeah. Especially with the shield block. As long as he didn't forget that he didn't have enough mana to shield slam, we're good. Oh, wow. That's a pretty okay Warzone Commander. Ooh, yeah. He's actually going to be going into turn 8 with the the ability to actually just go off with these patrons. And this is this is the, the turn of the game where, where Zoo is in a lot, of, a lot of trouble. Yeah, look at the damage, though. We're looking at, like, um, just from these two means we have 8, 9, 10, plus a Doom Guard stacking on top for another 6. It looks like, yeah, it looks like we're going to be sending in the, the Direwolf Alpha and connecting yeah. for a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of damage being dealt. Like, the Doom Guard hitting for 6 after this. So it puts up to 11. Yeah, puts him to 11 health. Uh, yeah. I think he's still going to be fine, just based on the hand that he's got. But Something slightly challenging is that a Direwolf is what keeps the Defender Vargas from copying the patrons, but... Um, yeah. You can't prevent that because the die wolf alpha. Yeah. Right, with with the death spite up, you don't have any defense. Even with the three attack taunt, the the death spite can take that out, and then patrons go crazy. But that actually does still leave up the uh, the doom guard and the Nerubian, it, barring the inner rage that we do know is in like Coach's hand. All you need now is like uh, a Malgan that never gets answered, which it will, of course. So. There's like almost no way the life coach doesn't pick this up. Is he not? Oh, he's not war Okay, No, he's, he's go just going to go for the whirlwind effects. With the execute. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. He's able to actually just wipe the board. Yeah, yeah. two executes. Do, you, do they really need the charge, right? That's the question. I think uh, ultimately, <laughs> not really. And so basically, it's come down to Eloise not being able to win anymore. This, this is like way too hard to come. Oh, no, Doom Guard tap, power of whelming. I've got it for you. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's there. You're right. Right Ooh, there. Here's a possibility. Possible. That, that is actually a way this game could end. Doctor would have to be specifically runner runner because from that point on, uh, he's She's gonna dead, armor dead. up and no longer possible. And there's oh, the oh, oh, that's five damage. What else do you have? That's unfortunately. Oh, I know what you have. You have runner runner juggler into implosion for everything face. Well, yeah, I'm being very optimistic. Statistically, I believe that is the most likely outcome of this game. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> how how do you even go about this? Yeah, I, if you I... play the Doom Guard now, you lose your charger. But if you wait, your opponent armors up and is out of range. You you can't not you can't keep Doom Guard and hope for like a PO. It's just not happening. Um, because yeah, the problem is that if you draw power overwhelming, it won't even go on your Doom Guard because you have to play exactly. it first. Unless you tap once more and then you play Doom Guard, discards the two other cards, and you get PO. But then that's only ten, uh, nine damage on ten health uh, well, from the warrior at that stage. The sequence would be that she has to draw power overwhelming on the second card. Right, exactly. She gets one from the turn. She plays that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. She, she just goes for this. Uh, it's still very unlikely. We're looking at what? I think it's actually just lethal. Oh, that's, no, yeah, lethal. With, with the axe. Oh, actually the fire just closes out the game. Never mind. 18 um, plus 3 will kill her. Yes, you're correct. 
Well, so, uh, again, pretty like... close game once again, but mm -hmm. it's a 3-1 lead for Nilum, and Temple Storm is in very bad position right now. I blame the spider. <laughs> well, like, Life Coach made that closer than it had to be. Right. It's true. Yeah, the the, uh, the misremembering which spider came first yeah. uh, definitely oh. put... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely put things in, in a, a little bit worse of a situation than Life Coach could have been in. Right. But uh, Grim Patron, once it gets to around you know turn eight or so, thanks to Patron itself, Death Spite, all these uh, all these you know whirlwinds executes, just able to take total control of the board. It's kind of hard to actually lose against the zoo once you get the patrons out. Like they have no way to clear it. They'd have to have to play the old school Hellfires. Yeah. And the just... actual card Grim Patron is just so powerful in that matchup. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even the War Song in charge. War Song wasn't even played. Yeah. It was just the the patron itself. Yep. That'll do it. Well, uh, Gara is uh, still smiling. He's dying still inside. Smiling. Oh, oh no, maybe he's not. not. <laughs> no, he's actually dead inside. Yeah, this is the, the Hi hiding behind the chair in disgrace. Priest Devil Storm. Well, here's here's one thing that I can say. Um, before the league began, there was a bunch of like people predicting like how things would go, and a lot of people put Devil Storm to finish like bottom, bottom, bottom yeah. two. They like picked them and Celestial to be like the teams to maybe week. The fact that they even got to the the playoffs here. In a reasonable seed spot, too. They came here as a third seed, I believe. Yeah, uh, they yeah. came in as third. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like that was already a big morale boost. And I think it's just it stinks to get this far and to feel so far from being able to have any product of your work. It it is it is you know the 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 zero for fourth place is pretty brutal here and. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I know that that you know Tempo Storm. They they you know floundered in the early matches. Were were guaranteed the fourth place slot uh, after the the first couple matches of yesterday, and uh, you know I, I I think that they may have you know been a little bit on tilt at one point yesterday. I know that that hyped posted something. You know, I want to go meditate for about twenty hours to you know relax myself here after uh, one of his one of his games yesterday. So, do you, uh, do you think there's any correlation to the fact that the, the two teams who are playing here in this quarterfinal are two teams who only could bring two members? I think there, there very well could be. Uh, the communication between teams is, is very, very important. I feel like the communication in Value Town, uh, both in the, the, the weeks leading up to the finale and during the regular season, uh, was a big part of our success. Uh, we, we actually worked very, very well together mm -hmm. and were able to sort of you know, work through things uh, because of that. And, and I think that uh, there are there are definitely problems when you know you're not necessarily communicating uh, effectively with your teammates, and it, it is obviously harder when they're not only not here but in totally different time zones. Yeah, plus they don't all have an notebook. Hmm? They don't all have. It's a true. Notebook. The notebook. Yeah, the notebook is true. key. <laughs> the death note, so to speak. Oh wow! What's going on? He well, writes down the name of his opponents, and well, that's what I, that's, that's what Trump probably secretly wishes, except. That they don't die, just that they're yeah. incapable of playing. Hard He's like, hard. they're going to play Mech Shaman. We're going to nail it for them, and then they're just going to fail. You know? I mean, I, I am rooming with Trump for this event, and he has been watching a lot of anime. Maybe that's, I, I don't know uh, anime, so maybe that's what he is uh, watching. I don't know. Yeah. It, uh, it, <laughs> all, it all makes sense. Makes sense. All right, so Nahil in the perfect position of having one win on each player, so yep. no more bench for them, and we've got Temple Storm that still has to go through yeah. just about everything. And this is really bad. Uh, just looking at the lineups too because they still have to get through some tough classes that uh, generally should still be able to take wins but I mean that's not unheard of I mean we've seen people go up like 4-1 and then lose get like, reverse sweep completely yeah. yeah I mean this is definitely a, a spot I was actually gonna say I think I think that that matching uh, up the hyped, mage I was gonna say I, I think that hype has to play mage here because it's so he, his mage is so bad against at least one of the decks yeah. remaining. Uh, as to how good the handlock matchup is, not entirely clear. But this is definitely the matchup Hypes is hoping for. He yeah. wanted to play against the Paladin deck. He's gonna get the check mark if he wins this, I think, because he's the only other yep. player who actually got the first win uh, mm -hmm. on the on Temple Storm. So that's gonna give. A yeah, pretty big, uh, I mean, momentum whiplash, I guess, back in the series. I mean, it's definitely it. having, having, you know, actually just getting success, especially when you are significantly down in a yeah. series, is it's a big morale boost. You know, when you when you do fall substantially behind, and it feels like there's just such this insurmountable hill to climb, it can it can definitely get to you and potentially influence your play. Yeah, the two point gap, I think, is where the threshold of bearing with the loss starts getting a bit tougher. Because when you're three points behind, it feels uh, unbelievably difficult. But two points is you can still do it. Uh, so if he gets this, he's going to be able to almost equalize. And Tice as well, or rather Hyped as well, it, it, just like Tice, has decided to play Freeze Mage. We, we saw absolutely no Freeze Mages in the uh, seeding rounds of this tournament. And now, all of a sudden, uh, Freeze Mage from both of these teams. Definitely an interesting adaptation. Crip believes that Freeze Mage 
completely dominates this deck. He says there's no the chance for it. I've actually, I've actually watched multiple games where uh, Crip has said I've never seen uh, something. I've, something. I've never, I've never seen Freeze Mage lose to Paladin, and then Freeze Mage lost to Paladin, and then the next time I was watching him casting Freeze Mage with Paladin, he said I've never seen Freeze Mage, Freeze Mage lose to Paladin. <laughs> I'm like, this, this just isn't true. I was there. It's a it lost. <laughs> Every time it's a new, uh, it's a new day. It is, it is definitely a very, very difficult matchup. The, um, the more. The more proactive versions of Paladin do have a, a bit better chance in the matchup because yeah. they are able to to apply a significant amount of pressure. Uh, the secrets themselves are actually extremely weak in this matchup. They're very, very combat oriented. So the Mysterious Challenger, while it's kind of a bomb in other matchups, here it's actually just not that. It's a big fireball deal. target that you have to ping afterwards. Basically, when it comes back to life. Um, the interesting thing too is that I guess repentance negates the value of something like a doomsayer. That that's the best one in yeah. the matchup is definitely repentance. Wow, that's actually what, looking what a very time to be good. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> what a time to be RDU. Repentance is the best. <laughs> Eye for an eye is coming. There's gonna be I a mean, three thirty damage. Compendous spirit gives him sometimes yeah. a little bit of buff outside of right. AOE, but it's very rare because of how. Frequently low health the minions are. A big problem with competitive spirit, specifically off of Mysterious Challenger, is just how it lines up against flame strike turns. You you end, you end up casting Mysterious Challenger, yeah. and your opponent your opponent can definitely respond with either flame strike or uh, Frost Nova Doomsayer. Another thing that's uh, a kind of a weakness of these particular secret paladin decks. Uh, against Freeze Mage is that they typically don't play many silence effects, if any. And uh, Iron Beak Owl is one of the best ways to actually deal with the Frost of the Doomsayer. A one of, I think, makes a lot of sense in that deck. If only to deal with even the counter deck sometimes. In a mirror match, Iron Beak Owl can be the difference between you losing or winning uh, because of the amount of buffs that just go around. So uh, He's going to opt for the uh, Acolyte instead of the ping. So taking the 2 1 off the ping and keeping the coin. Ooh. Was not enough. This actually, Blessing of Might from RDU here suggests that this is actually just Aggro Paladin. This yeah. is not, in fact, Secret Paladin. Yeah, I'm actually liking this because it's going to. I mean, if you go for the, the tray or the juggler, you can then go for Shield Mini Bot and probably Blessing of Might that guy. Uh, I think Muster for Battle is still overall stronger. I do I do think that okay. I would prefer a then Muster here. For the 3 3 damage. You get the juggler, you get the juggler damage. Yeah, it is, it's. it's Perhaps likely your juggler gets pinged down next turn, and getting the three damage in from Muster along with the weapon yeah. and the bodies themselves, I think, is a stronger, a stronger yeah. overall turn. Yeah. If Muster said like deal four damage to your opponent, summon a three three, it's kind of what's happening. It does, yeah. This is like a lot of damage is going on. You don't, you aren't impressed at first by the one damage here, the one one here, but they do add up. Yeah, and with two ice blocks in hand, the only thing this mad scientist can get is ice barrier, unless Hype is playing something weird. Um, the Nova's gonna buy him some time, you know, if he picks up uh, an AoE, he's gotta find Blizzard. Oh, though. there's Ice Barrier. Oh man, another Ice Barrier, and that's gonna be the end of this Mad Scientist's short life. Wow, this, this is... game might end very quickly. And, and the, as I said earlier, the more aggressive versions of Paladin right. are the very ones that can well. actually... And, and this is... Uh, this is definitely you know, a very aggressive version here. We do see Mysterious Challenger come out of RDU, so he is playing, I suppose, just a, a version of Mysterious uh, Challenger Paladin with a more aggressive bent thanks to the Blessing of Mine. Yeah, Thrall, if you're gonna smork, do it right. Paladin knows best. And Hype, you, you see Hype sort of muttering to himself, kind of shaking his head a little bit here. This is, this is kind of a nightmare scenario, yeah. because this is exactly the matchup that he did want with his Freeze Mage deck. And he's he not is, winning it. He is. He is. He's dead. Way if, behind. Um, if he plays Mad Scientist and Ping, he's dead. And he knows that. He knows that there's too many easy ways for his opponent to kill him. Yeah. He, Hail he Mary actually Shredder. played a little greedy with the coin acolyte. Yeah. Um, instead of trying to be proactive, I can understand why. And then the follow with the arcane intellect was just too much investment of damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He thought he had a lot more time than he actually did. I was a little surprised to see him him coin uh, it out. Yeah. Well. Specifically to actually cast the the uh, arcane intellect there rather than ping off the juggler. Maybe maybe he was too far behind, and needed to find something like like doomsayer to go with uh, go with frost nova. Um, but here, I mean, he he's basically done what he could and now is facing actual yeah. just lethal next turn. Well, Top deck the doomsayer, and you can still get a board away. That's that's pretty much it. But even then, you're like at a critical health level. So there's uh, 16 damage on board. Actually, more than that with a juggler coming out. So there's like 17. That's forcing Hype to have Doomsayer off the top, or another Nova to use with the Doomsayer afterwards. Uh, so it's going to be a little difficult, to say the least. If if uh, if Ardu actually plays uh, Juggler plus Minibot, yeah, that's uh, or, or even just Juggler plus Hero, hero power, power, yeah, I, yeah, he puts uh, he potentially puts Hype to to a point that even if he does. 
uh, have Nova Doomsayer next turn, he actually can just can he just kill him with the weapon? No, not quite. Well, I think it's gonna be he's gonna be like two durability short, but he oh, yeah, can find consecration. One damage short. Two sword champion consecration. There's a lot of owls in the deck. Any charger? Yeah, he's, he's, he, oh, maybe yeah, you yeah, just yeah, leave yeah. one room for a charger minion in case uh, you need to just go in if he goes for a Nova Doomsayer. That's uh, that's something. That's an argument you can actually make. I could see that. You just leave one room open. It's reasonable. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he can't actually play juggler or minion. You can just get like one. Right. One he, hit. He, if you yeah. play juggler another minion, you'd actually put him to put him to. Uh, Ooh, that's not doomsayer. Nova. Perfect, the perfect draw. So his other option is to frost Nova now and play mad scientist mm -hmm. and hope his opponent doesn't have choose over champion. Yeah, or his other yeah. option is to play Ice Block and just really hope that he can stall out, but the problem with Ice Block is that you You're need... You're 1-1. to one. Uh, yeah. You're down to 1 health. I mean, you have to find Ice Bear off the top to go with the Nova, and then he, still he live still against the He still has the, um, the Vice Justice. Right. So you really need Ice Bear on the second uh, second block or something. Yeah, I think overall just dead uh, if you don't dies. know. He, he also dies even if that Shredder's Doom Sayer. Like, because, because it still juggles to the face. <laughs> Yeah, it's one hit, yeah. so... He's looking for that AoE or, like, a heal bot. He probably runs a heal bot, there's no way, but the thing is the heal bot yeah. right now doesn't save him. This, this needs to draw a second Frost Nova. Okay, and he gets Blessing of Kings. doesn't really do much. He can buff a minion, so that way it's... He can spread it out. Like, he can buff his Knife Juggler, which is... You, you buff the enemy's Lugor and you unreasonable. smash yourself into it? <laughs> Good BM. Yeah, it's still losable for RDU. But it's gonna be Very really low weird. Chance. Yeah. I think it's like a three percent chance or less for hype to win. He has to hit three cards specifically of like Frost Nova, and then RG has to miss like Consecration, True Silver, um, Cog Hammer. Yeah, even Hammer Brad. I mean, hype, hype <laughs> actually can stall for multiple well, turns. Though he has two ice blocks. I actually kind of I'm not not sold on attacking with this weapon. You'd keep it for. I think if you, I think if you if your opponent you know gets up an ice block and is able to, you're able to get him to one and he can freeze your board, uh, your the weapon actually gives you the ability to kill him. I guess I guess uh, RDU does have juggler and minions that can do the same thing, so it, it may not really matter. Well, I think hype's thinking he has flame strike next turn. Now yeah. here's a question: If you flame strike this board, you get you get the juggle from the shredder. No, you do not. Okay. So it dies before the effect comes out. Because yeah. I feel like I've done stuff like that, where it's like, I clear with AoE, there but the juggler been... like, still pushes damage. Or... Yeah, it happens like... It's a per, yeah, I think like, it's like M-Gang boss. Hearthstone Science has something like that as an explanation. Like, player priority, I think, uh, might make it so some players get the trigger and others don't. Interesting. Well, still yeah. nothing you can do. You yeah, he was, go for the he was really banking for Frost Nova. Blizzard actually doesn't help him, because he still died at whatever the Shredder drops. Yeah. You have one more draw, he, two he more draws. He ice block fact. here. Yeah. And if he ice blocks, then I guess he plays Mad Scientist. Nope. Doomsayer. Man, Doomsayer would be pretty crazy, but it's just it's just optimistic, to say the least, to expect that to work. Oh, more card draw, because why not? <laughs> now... Out of flame strike range? If, yeah, if he flame strikes, then he knows he dies to anything. Like... Any little bit of damage, and this, this divine favor almost certainly will. Yeah, I mean, it's blessing of kings plus divine favor. Yeah, maybe. on on that juggler, you you blessing of kings, flame doesn't even kill it. Mm -hmm. Yep, and this looks like RDU is going for exactly that play. Kind of just sort of shaking his head. Yeah, this is wow. not good at all. So oh, crit consecration too. If you yeah, have, crit, I hope you're watching. Dude. Yeah, I, I hope you're watching have... this because Kibler like... Kibler has something to say. <laughs> Uh, Frost Nova wouldn't even keep him alive. To be fair, this is this is this is Aggro Paladin, which definitely does have right. a different dynamic in the matchup than Midrange Paladin. Definitely much much yeah. less uh, suited to actually pressure right. nearly as hard. It's a very different uh, very different list, but I mean, I have to get RDU's list. It reminds me of the first draft that he showed me uh, back when we it's were just, playing on. It's Sky. just like so interesting that RDU's playing like Aggro only exclusively, yeah. and I think it has to do with the fact that Tyson. Um, Life coach. Life coach are so not anti, or they're so like not against the idea of playing aggro. Generally speaking, <laughs> like life coach refuses to play aggro. Just purists. The, the closest thing he has is the mech mage, but even then, it's more of a mid range approach type of stuff. Um, and in this case, it's like already used the one being super aggressive all the time. Yeah, it's kind of like those tendrils players in Magic, mm -hmm. I guess. They refuse to play anything else.
I, I think he's got to play second ice block here. Unfortunately. I, I mean, there's there's no way to win if he doesn't. Yeah, and there's also no way to win if. if... Oh. Also, oh, he's hoping the juggler never does a juggle. Okay. No, I, I no, no. Just... Oh, he's gonna juggle once. Yeah. He, he's just gonna. So he's hoping he's he's giving room for his opponent to make a mistake by like attacking. Attacking first. Because yeah. if he just already just juggles one time, then he wins. If he attacks in, then he gives him a small chance. Are you actually should just consecrate? Yeah, just consecration and pass. Okay, and there it is. Okay, so that's gonna wrap up the game here. Uh, Hyped ends up dropping the freeze mage versus Paladin. This, this is, this rough. is uh, starting to get pretty, pretty. One, I mean, disgusting. It's like just like one sided. Desperate. It's I like mean, this, this is not. This is not a good show. Yeah. Uh, this is this is definitely a, a very, very, very rough spot for them. Uh, they 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 need to you know. Really come into a serious mm -hmm. late night rally here and, uh, and and pick up a couple of wins in a row because they have I believe Tice's Druid and uh, Life Coach's Warlock left to to yeah. go through and, and they uh, have to basically try to beat Handlock from Life Coach, which right. is actually like a Handlock uh, special. Uh, yeah, those are the, the two of those. That's their signature deck. Right. If I pin somebody to play Druid, if I want someone to play Druid for me, it's gonna be Tice. So. And life coach, you know, he is is renowned for his uh, handlock play, and that's that's not really a position that you want to be in. Is 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 having to to go through those two decks with not just one or two, but fully five of your decks in your lineup. So I can see everything that uh, Trump is doing right uh -oh. now. Oh, Trump! I can't read a hide single it, word. Trump, hide it! I can't read a single <laughs> word, but the secret strats, no, our notebook revealed. Yeah, they can see our young priestesses. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I guess if you're looking from Nilan's perspective, uh, they can just queue up whatever. Um, there's bad matches for Druid. There's bad matches for Handlock. But if you're on Temple Storm side, Prism I guess Age. I just play the the Hunter here for Gara. I think you just play the Hunter, try to grab a win. It's good against both. Um, you should be able to grab that, and then just kind of put your opponent in a position where you can corner them. So. If Life Coach plays and you beat him, and then you can queue up against Handlock and get another win, and then you can all of a sudden target Druid with you know the Priest and the Warlock, or on the opposite end you could target the Handlock. So this is one opening that could exist, and I think Temple Storm was like, weren't they the ones in the position up against um, Nil and when they were up four to two or four they, to they one? were right. four games four. to two, uh, and then they just lost yeah. four in a row. They did. They were like super close, and they just couldn't. They just kept losing. And the shaman won. The shaman won. Yeah. That's right. It wasn't their day. That was the time. <laughs> that the one time the shaman won was against Temple Storm. Yeah, that's actually a pretty big feat. I'm pretty happy that uh, Nihil decided to change their game plan because they, they they kept saying you know shaman is fine, shaman is good, uh, but you know apparently going into the second phase they figured out it wasn't as good maybe as hunter maybe it's good but not as good the interesting thing is uh if someone played mech shaman against nihilum's current lineup it would actually be an excellent deck yeah <laughs> because they have handlock and freeze mage and druid Patriot. all of which yeah. and patron all of which are actually favorable matchups for mech shaman yeah but the fiasco uh probably like gave everyone not just rd but everyone ptsd <laughs> where you will never play mech shaman again in your life well it's interesting because going into the going into the second phase uh, you need to think about you know what are what are the the, the you know implications of what what has performed well so far yeah. what people are likely to bring and you know what sort of steps beyond that it's like okay well if if this is what people are playing now then, what do people anticipate and what do we think they're going to bring and it's another one of those sort of leveling situations yeah. it's like okay well you know if we anticipate people playing handlock and freeze mage because of the performance of decks that they're they're strong against maybe a deck like mech shaman is a good choice yeah it would have been actually pretty sick to see gara bring that uh, <laughs> i would have actually loved to see that happen. gara gara loves his lineup we were we were yeah. talking that you know he was saying that we were dragon brothers you know <laughs> both played the dragon oh, man. Man, the and dragon the, brothers the, the 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 dragon and smork brothers i guess so yeah well you both like <laughs> you know asking questions to the opponents uh, by playing minions so you're you're generally not players who sit back and control you're very offensive on tempo uh, it's kind of nice to, to watch those games. Offensive, offensive, not offensive. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm very offensive. I'm no, definitely very offensive. offensive? Is there really a difference in pronunciation? There, there is. There what? Is, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll actually have to clear that. Offensive. Yeah, there is. There is. Well, <laughs> I have to look that up. It's like, today I learned. I like to consider myself inoffensive, but very offensive. Off yeah, so. okay. <laughs> wow. But here we have Eloise uh, with Paladin against Life Coach playing Warlock. And uh, if Eloise is playing Secret Paladin, this is actually potentially one of the, the better matchups they do have yeah. left. 
Yeah, Rep- for sure. Repentance. And then Life Coach comes out with Zoo. And then you're like, <laughs> what? Yeah, even then against Zoo, it's, it's, it's sometimes still fine. okay. Yeah. It's sometimes okay. Um, I, I do know that Eloise doesn't really like playing this Paladin deck. I think uh, uh, something that people don't really know about Temple Storm is that, and, and a few other teams actually share this, is that there are a couple players, every every team ATLC actually has exactly this. There's always one, maybe two players say, I want to play this, and then one player says, okay. And then they just play uh, every other thing. Yeah, Dog is for, the player for, for Value Town. I guess, well, Dog, that... no, I mean, Dog actually has all, all played decks that he does enjoy playing, right. and that he has a lot of experience right. with. But um, there, there are players, like, for example, in Cloud9, they're always like, we play this, we play this, and then he comes like, okay, I guess I'll just play, you know, Hunter and, sure. and Warlock, it's like no one else does. And then uh, on um, Temple Storm, Hyped and Gar are very resolute because I think, as from what I was told, what I was told in discussions, Eloise wa- was going to play Mage today, mm-hmm. and then Hype's like, "No, I'm playing Mage." So I'm like, playing. Oh, I guess I'm just playing Paladin and, uh, hmm. and Warlock. And Warlock. <laughs> I, I guess that there's nothing else to bring. I mean, that, that is that is one of you know one of the things that can come with not necessarily having that in person communication where you're able to you know plan things out. I mean, when uh, when we finished our match or didn't actually finish our match when. Yeah. When we were we through our delayed match yesterday, we went, uh, I went to to dinner with uh, with Dog and Trump, and we sat down and for several hours discussed our options of what we thought different you know we should do with our lineup for the set for the second phase. Well, uh, the, this should not surprise anybody. The molten giant <laughs> signifies that it's handlock. Mm-hmm. It could be a demon handlock. It could I, be a demon handlock. Yeah, I've seen the life coach play a bit of that, but uh, I'd be surprised. He he really likes the mountain giant version of handlock. I remember him running a mountain giant demon handlock. I don't remember what the cuts were, but it was just a really top heavy. Uh, although I don't know if you can call a four mana eight eight top heavy. <laughs> it involved a lot of big things, right? One of the one of the interesting things about the regular season of ATLC was uh, the fact that Life Coach pretty much brought handlock every single week, but brought a different version of handlock. Yeah, just about every week. He so, did that in multiple leagues. Yeah. Yeah, I mean sometimes he would have. Uh, demon handlock. Sometimes you'd have more traditional handlock. Sometimes you would have uh, handlock with Ragnaros. Sometimes you'd have Duraxis. There we there's go. Uh, and there is a void color. So it is. It does look like demon handlock from a life coach here. And Eloise plays the shield and mini bot, just anticipating more, the dark bomb. Yeah, more more defensive approach here. It does lose out some damage, assuming life coach didn't have the response. But generally, handlocks do. That's kind of what the deck does best. Yeah, and he's very well uh, versed in what kind of deck he's facing us at the same time. Yeah, I just wonder has... though how much practice really these people have been have, able to have against Secret Paladin, considering how recent it is. They can't possibly have as much experience playing against it than say Zoo. Uh, maybe it plays a little bit the same, in a way. It's so. interesting that she's choosing to play Repentance here. I think it's the time for the turn four drop that would usually come out of opponent. It is. Probably the only repentance in the deck, so timing it could be something that's key because Mysterious Challenger won't be pulling it if that's the only secret. Mm-hmm. So Eloise really wants to go for this uh, instead of coining out Shredder, she wants to go for Shredder next turn and then coin out Mysterious Challenger. It looks like she, her her goal is likely because Life Coach did Life Tap and then Life Tap. She, she's looking to potentially stop the Mountain Giant this turn, yeah. which could come down in turn four as an eight eight and be a serious threat to her board if it weren't for that repentance. Even a Drake is annoying. I mean, we're talking about a really like a four ten. Um, yeah. So I mean, the Void Caller here, if there was a Malganus, would be a great drop, but there isn't. So it's co- it's going to be a little uh, more difficult to justify. Do you have Watcher, Dark Bomb, or I don't the know. problem with the Void Caller here? Is oh, no, it doesn't make sense right now. There's no demons to actually right, back right. it up. There had to be a Malganus to make that play ever. You don't want to take too much damage, so he might realistically play Watcher and Dark Bomb. Oh. If he feels greedy, he can tap in Dark Bomb. Oh, he's going the greediest. The greediest play. Repentance does end up being okay, considering that um, that's like the least. Problematic, really problematic target. Yeah, that uh, he, he, like doesn't really matter. So Eloise, I mean, I've seen some of these Paladin decks run equality, but they're very few and far between. Uh, that yeah. would be almost necessary because when the double molten comes out, unless she plays around it perfectly, uh, there's going to be a big issue. Well, I assume that uh, Eloise is going to play a Shredder. She has two options to do that or to juggle twice. Yeah, I, I guess you could justify choose over champion because it would also threaten whatever comes out the following turn. Um, and then Mysterious Challenger is much more secure. 
Yeah, I like the coins challenge on five, maybe, depending on what comes out. I mean, I think that the Paladin Shredder here is probably your strongest play overall. You do get a, a chance to juggle the, the Watcher down, and you also actually have a board that's pretty resilient to a Hellfire. Uh, you, you've got to be worried about board clear effects from the Handlock, and having both the... Uh, the shielded minibot and the, uh, the the shredder the shredder is a, uh, a nice combination, particularly with the avenge. Looks like Eloise decides to to get, get her best chance to take down the uh, the ancient watcher with juggles and just goes for the sure. space there. So a sticky board though, right? Like, yeah, no, I mean, even a hellfire here is actually not that bad for her. She does get an avenge on one of those minibots. Both of them survive, leaving her with seven seven power in play. Oh yeah, I guess because the avenge is there. And if this 1-1 one, one goes down, it has two Divine Shield targets that go right. above. So that's, that's really annoying. Yeah, and if it buffs the Juggler, then how do you deal with four health? That's another thing, too. Well, uh, Life Coach is in a similar situation as Hype was the previous game against the Paladin. Uh, there's a lot of options, and it's not necessarily a bad hand as the game develops, but do you have the time to go to play it? You do have those two Moltens, you have the Sun Fury... Is, is Healbot ever good just to stall one turn before you can actually develop those options? Not really, because then you're still... Like, what Healbot does is it allows your opponent to actually build up the board more yeah. and still attack and prep you for the following kill. Alright, so I guess Coil Hellfire is the only play that makes sense. I like this play from, from Life Coach here. He does end up removing two additional attacks from the board. Uh, gets the Avenge on the Minibot. So, so now... eight damage is needed for Eloise to seal the game. Yeah, there's no way she gets it. She's going to coin the Mysterious Challenger, most likely, on five mana. Yeah. And then, I don't know if she she's going to like anticipate her opponent having two Molten Giants, but I'm not sure if she hits either way, but she could justify because she has Cog Hammer, and that allows you to trade pretty effectively. I mean, you also have to be really scared of just Giant Shadow Flame here. You have a board that is really vulnerable to it, and, and you, win next you have, you have such a powerful board right, right now that your opponent has to play basically a giant taunt in order to stop right. you. And you, you put yourself at such risk of, of just getting totally blown out, not only by, by the uh, the giant shadow flame, but also mm -hmm. potentially something like double giant uh, yeah. plus uh, Sun Fury Protector, which is exactly sure. what life goes Well, it'll work anyway. You can tap double giant Sun Fury, so, right? Uh, is that yeah, true? That, is oh, that actually is. That actually, he does have, because he's exactly 13, yeah, life tap reduces him to one. He can... Uh, he, Leaving with four mana and he, he could even dark bomb himself, and then <laughs> that brings him down to ten. So he has two floating mana. Uh, but Ooh, I don't think that's a that's play. also an excellent draw from uh, life coach. Yeah, here. the void caller being able to summon that would be great, but uh, there's another void caller in the hand. No repentance, by the way. Yep, that's something mm -hmm. that we were talking about. Better spirit, does that give any reach? It'll, not quite. I mean, it, it makes it so Cog, uh, Cog Hammer plus the 6 5 now kills one giant. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Um, and the juggler could. No, it, you couldn't play another minion. I was going to say, could give you that extra one to kill the other giant if you get lucky, but not the case. Yeah, Cog Hammer here is pretty big. It doesn't really matter what it falls on. Yeah, because you're going to trade. It allows you to trade effectively either way. I mean, you could actually just, if you were going to uh, attack in with the 6-5, you could actually attack in with the 6-5. First, first yeah. attack with the, co or uh, then play the Cog Hammer, and, and then attack with it. So you're just guaranteed the slightly larger minion. It actually might be worse that you have a 7-power guy, just in case your opponent does have Big Game Hunter, though. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. It's going to work out. Either way, like, both minions can be taken down um, because of the Dark Bomb. So I think it's ultimately inconsequential. Remember the days where you could kill somebody by attacking their own Molten with eye for an eye? Oh yeah, that was uh, possible. <laughs> that was fun. Fun. When you were the Paladin player, it was great. <laughs> you could hold your wrath yourself just for the lulls. Yeah, and now there's, of course there's more complicated stuff going on um, because of those other secrets. Noble Sacrifice will absorb the first hit from the Sun Fury Protector. Uh, and then it buffs another target. It might buff the target your giant collides into. And there's just like all these little small nuances that ends up being very bad. And, and the worst part of it all is that there's no taunts. So even the Void Callers that can come out, you can't really taunt and force a, a trade into it. The Dark Bomb first does mean that the Life Coach has full information about how the Avenge will land before making any attacking choices. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's the one he wanted. Well, with the other dark moment, it works out. But the thing is, he's not gonna be able to use the heal bot in that case. 
It's also interesting because casting the dark bomb first does mean that uh, Eloise gets the juggler, the juggler back, back rather yeah, than getting the two one. Right. I'm a little surprised by Life Coach's line of play, but I guess he doesn't want. Um, actually, I can't yeah. figure out what that played around. I can't actually figure it out. So if you find it, let I, me know. I, right. I'm, I'm a little perplexed by that myself. I think. I guess it does mean that there's no there's no juggle off of the juggler. No, no it doesn't matter because it would come out either way. I don't understand. Puts it on uh, one he's at time. Is, he might even. Is he just gonna hold position? Have we found the deck that beats Life Coach's timer? <laughs> well, the secrets are oh, pretty wow. complicated. Uh, is that it? So we're looking at beat the giant and you attack for nine. No, not quite it. Not even. No, you can't attack twice. Yeah, there's no, no way. You don't have true silver. The fact that the Monsieur Challenger doesn't die to this is pretty significant. Yeah. So you can get past. The giant. the giant. I think you can afford to take the damage. I, I don't really think that. I guess you're really afraid of big game hunter, but wouldn't your opponent have played that already? Yeah, but if you top deck it creates the big swing that you avoided. So uh, again, the way to play around big game hunter is to cast a ten turn. in, ten nine in against the giant. And yeah. Then, Trade down the board, but that, that's just that, that's, that's that's so vulnerable yeah. to to any kind yeah, of removal. Exactly. Any, I mean, even a, a mortal coil. I, I don't know if we've seen both mortal coils. We've seen no, one of them. and he has another dark bomb in hand, so it's yeah, like so he I mean, will deal with that. And you miss the damage to the face. I think being at eleven health, like okay, too, as paladin, especially if you're going to clear the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she agrees. So, so. muster here is fine. If you juggle very well, you might have an opportunity to clear some minions on the board. Yeah, the juggler might go elsewhere than. Uh, I like I like just thirteen to the face here. Yeah, yeah. thirteen to the face is pretty good too. Oh, fourteen. fourteen. Yeah. Oh, all right, juggler goes down. Okay. So now we see still no Mountain toss, still no anything. way to survive. I feel. Uh. <sighs> tap. Tap into what? Uh. Let's figure Sun it out. Fury protector. Uh, and yeah, then he can okay. taunt the, the Void Drake, Caller. Or the Void Caller to get Malaganus, then and live. Then... Does that into both Big Game Hunter and Sun Fury Protector? <sighs> no, you're right. <laughs> Tap into double, yeah, double. Wait, 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 wait. Doomsayer. 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 <laughs> I, I think that's actually this the best. Is, the best. That, that, is, that legitimately could be that is the, best the best way to survive. The problem is you actually die. True Silver. Because it's True Silver, but <laughs> even the Miracle Doomsayer uh, would not be enough here. But it looks good. It does. It's just, it's yeah. you know, it's actually. Then you use up the the good RNG, so to speak, that happens. When a doom you don't want to waste, 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 waste this. You don't want to waste this. Life. I mean, life coach doesn't know that he's dead to a tree silver. He knows that he's dead to a tree silver. But he doesn't know the tree silver's there. So. Oh. No. Mana addict. That's mm. it. He is also dead to mana addict. Yeah, well, it's an explosive uh, sheep. Be used it. <laughs> this is used it to anything. Yeah. Perhaps the beginning of the Tempo Storm comeback trail. Yeah. Um, a much needed to win. Absolutely. I mean, the, now four and two, still a tough spot. Still a very yeah, tough spot. It was just yesterday they were in the opposite position it's and true. they lost. So this could be their revenge. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Do you think uh, Luis likes the Secret Paladin a bit better now after the uh, the, the <laughs> I mean, way I mean, performed against the handlock? It's one of those. I mean, she she really likes decks like handlock and. Um, Freeze mages are like her favorite decks. Wow, and she's stuck playing everything else every time, basically well, these days. Yeah, I think based off of um, what was information, is that she yeah. likes she plays whatever she feels like the team wants her to play. She's like All flex right. spot, right? There's speed, and that's kind of how every team dynamic works in other games. It's like you have one person that's more flexible. You have people who are dedicated because they think because they're, the, they, they're the best at being able to play that. Um, even if Dragon Priest wasn't the best deck, Gar would probably still bring it, you know, because that's what he <laughs> wants to play. So this, yeah, is, makes this is the dynamic that's on the team. And my guess is RDU is kind of like that too. Because it's like you're not going to convince Life Coach that you're a better patron player and a then, better yeah. handlock player than him. Mm -hmm. uh, Tice is like, you're not going to convince Tice to get off Druid for him. And he's also one of the best Freeze Mage players in Europe. So like, what does RDU feel? He's like, well, we can't just have all control decks or people can bring this type of deck and just crush us. So he plays the more aggressive stuff. Like you, you can bet that Artie would rather play Hunter. Hunter versus Hunter is his favorite matchup in the game. Yeah, he says so multiple times. Yeah, and he loves playing Handlock too. You know that kind of stuff is Artie's jam. But uh, he's instead he's taking the the weird classes, 
And he's got Hunter right there. Oh, he does have Hunter. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> think, right. I think, however, that he's pretty happy with Secret Ballad, and he seemed to like the deck a lot right after he saw it. Uh, after the you know the sure. debacle from sure. Shikso, immediately afterwards, RDU was really hyping the deck. I feel like RDU would prefer not to bring Mike Shaman every year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ever again. <laughs> Ever again. Oh. I mean, I, frankly, RD, RDU has to be feeling great now after sure. just struggling You're so much himself. with that Mike Shaman deck in the previous matches. Yeah. He's he's now the first member of the team who's uh, who's actually gotten those double check marks. Yeah. It's not me. It's the deck, right? That, that's kind of fun. How it feels yeah. right now, um, but yeah, I mean, there's yeah, still a possibility this. that they come back. Well, uh, there is a possibility. It's still going to be tough. Um, one of the things that's interesting too is that life coach. Do you risk playing him again? Because if so, then you can guarantee that Temple Storm will try to corner the Druid with the Priest. I yeah, right. That that's like because you don't want the Priest to or play the, the Hunter. Temple. You can play Hunter as well. Hunter here is a really good pick because yeah. then it it's it's like good against Druid and the Warlock, mm -hmm. and you're in a situation where. You know Nylon wants to switch to Druid here. They don't want to have to uh, get benched here for life coach and then get cornered and lose a couple of games too. So this is a very interesting dynamic. Yeah, I, th I think I think that if you're in Nihilum's spot, sending the, the, the Warlock is pretty rough because you know you, you if you'd lose, you like you said, you can just play the priest against mm -hmm. the druid, and the priest definitely struggles quite a bit. And the zoo against that. Because if they keep mm -hmm. winning, you can basically get down to mage versus right. druid warlock. And right. eventually the mage uh, against the handlock could pick up the win. If they anticipate this, if they mm -hmm. if Temple Storm anticipates that Nilum will switch, then they can just already assume, oh, as if they've benched. So they're like, yeah, like, of course you're not going to want to play Handlock twice. Yeah. We'll just queue up Zoo. And, and, and that's when you that's when you get into, or, or queue up the Priest. Yeah. But that's when you get into those sort of le leveling That's games. risky. And uh, Warlock versus Warlock. We do see Life Coach bring okay. up Warlock again. So this is the gamble. I'm, I'm a little surprised that, that uh, Tempo Storm did not choose to play Hunter here. Mm -hmm. Hunter's a deck that actually has strong matchups in either either matchup. So even if they bring Warlock, or or even if they bring Druid, you have a great chance of winning. And if you win with that Hunter deck against the Handlock and bench mm -hmm. the Handlock, you get to potentially, as we were saying, queue up the Warlock. Yeah, play, into play it. your your uh, your Warlock and your your Priest mm -hmm. into it, both which have much better matchups against Druid than they do uh, against the Handlock deck. So I'm, I'm yeah. a little surprised by this decision making from Tempo Storm. That, that's certainly one level. I think the next level above that is picking a uh, warlock and expecting your opponent to pick warlock because if you get druid you're happy if you get warlock it's a 50 50 matchup especially with a slower zoo that's not as face oriented to try to rush the game you have dr boom you have malganis as well so if you feel like you have a decent chance to win that but say you lose the zoo versus handlock you still have hunter to, to fall back upon you can corner the druid multiple anchor. times until freeze mage comes up right. and then you toss a coin like then garo plays hunter and then yeah. always plays you again and then you get the same position you got a mage yeah but yeah ultimately i think i still think the hunter made uh, made it easier as well because you're spreading the the check marks around as well there's that we'll see we'll see i mean this is again a very it's a must win situation because the druid will have to beat like the freeze mage or the freeze mage will have to beat the druid if this is the case like you're just gonna have to make sure that priest avoids handlock and druid avoids the freeze mage that's the goals for temple storm for now is just win like win at, at any cost even if it's a bad matchup just do your best to win all right so mulligan two cards with two doom guards were no keeps for eloise so she got rid of them it's a pretty weak hand on Eloise's part. It's she a does, weird hand, definitely. Yeah. She has she has a lot of resilient minions, but she doesn't have any aggressive minions. And it's it's interesting because this is actually a matchup where, uh, in some cases, you know, the early pressure is very important because you do want to be able to actually uh, play to the board against the handlock. But actually doing a lot of damage to them quickly is not necessarily in your best interest because right. of Molten Giant. And a lot of times, Molten Giant is just dead um, if you are able to loom in that mid range spot. But you are giving your opponent time. And now that's one way to Whoa. commandingly seize the board. You can just coin. Yeah, there is no that's, way you don't yeah, that's coin that PO. Play here. Well, she doesn't coin PO because not. BGH would actually punish it. Never mind. There's too much all in yeah, on, on yeah. it with a coin. And again, the rush is not to kill them immediately. Uh, it's the fact that you have something on the board. You have something on the board. You're like looming to th threaten whatever comes out here. Like Mountain Giant is not actually that big of a deal. If Implosion hits for 4, is even better, but not by much. I mean, PO is a really safe play. It just kind of... I mean, power Overwhelming and the Imp Gang boss, or, or even like Implosion, Imp Gang boss, or Implosion... Oh, power, power Overwhelm, like, you're... Yeah. No. It's, it's all reasonable. <laughs> Everything is weird. 
Yeah, I guess like trading the uh, the Ruby Nag is fine. I mean, you did get the the health transferred over to the three five, and you were gonna have to address that uh, the giant eventually. I can I can anticipate that she wants to really hold on to the implosion post AOE, it's, and Lyco is gonna be looking for that. Um, he's in an awkward spot once again, having Void Collar with no demons, and it feels like Life Coach always has options in the early game, but they're not very good. And I, I kind of feel bad because it just seems like Hanlock is hitting its very weird inconsistency. Yeah, yeah. usually it's one of the, usually it's it one of the most, most consistent yeah. because of how often it draws. One of the things that he just hasn't seen is Twilight Drake. It's We've seen any, one, but he didn't never played it. Not, not, not in the early game. Yeah, definitely is, not. Twilight Drake. You know, while uh, the Mountain Giant is obviously a great great turn for play in this matchup, it's actually the, the health of your minions is far more important than their actual attack. Having a four ten Twilight Drake in turn four against two, other than against Iron Beast, right? Owl being an example that's very niche. Yeah, the, it's actually it's actually better for you because it's able to kill more minions while surviving its, itself with its uh, larger body. Right. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Void Cover come out here just because it's a body on the board and you also threaten the bigger minions. You know, it's a threat at the same time as it actually allows you to use the Hellfire Dark Bomb or Hellfire Coil might force uh, more owl, effectively. Honestly. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels. I think Owl's just so important in this matchup simply because of uh, how important it is to be able to actually get by big taunts. Sure. I mean, here, the, the scary thing, of course, is if your opponent does hit Alganis or hits Doom Guard, um, but at the same time, you know, is is that scarier for you in the long run in the game than your opponent having access to a taunted Molten Giant later on? That's fair. That's a fair point. Hypothetically, she could also deal with it through implosions and then trades on things. Uh, Doom Guard is problematic. It just has the same amount of health. She might opt to ignore, and that gives Life Coach an opportunity. So this is this is a really interesting choice here for Eloise to see. If she can kind of peg the life coach and not have anything, and if she does, uh, will she go for the trade? Implosion is a strange choice here. My, I think that I would go with abusive sergeant. It looks like she's with or without the owl. I think I, I, think I would. I would probably abusive sergeant creeper and. Go. Yeah, it looks like she is doing in fact exactly that. Yes. Wow, she calls it, and there's nothing that comes out on the other side. Life coach, the bluff is called. Well, I mean, that's that's one of the things that, that against yeah. these demon handlock decks, there aren't that many demons. You know, there aren't actually that many that many the threats strip, that can come up with a void yeah. caller. And particular when you're, particularly when you're playing a matchup like this, that can be you know so uh, so clutch uh, in terms of your ability to need yeah. to deal with certain threats. I think that that Eloise is totally correct to actually save that owl. That, that was a very. I mean, the saving the owl is great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but owl, to be able to make that call, not ignore and just like attack face and be aggressive. I I disagree with her ordering. I probably would have attacked that first to figure right. out what happened. But I, I, I guess if there was a Malganus, yeah, maybe that's actually worse. So maybe no, maybe that was actually just 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 great. Ends up working out fine, and life coach is now uh, he's get he's getting more intense by the turn. Yeah, I mean the, you can coil right now to actually figure out what comes out. If it's a uh, heal bot's not a bad card, but with the molten in hand, you're not gonna, you're not about to use that anytime yeah. soon. And gang boss will come out. You get away with playing an ancient Ooh, watch. There is a little a late, little late, a little late, late to the party. Melganis uh, drawn yep. right afterwards. It looks like we're gonna see. Yeah, that's that uh, Ancient right. Watcher come down with Sun Fury Protect. I like this a lot. I mean, it's going to at least weaken the board from Eloise and allow the Hellfire to do what it does best. So, kind of liking this. Yeah, this is probably going to provoke Implosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although, I think tapping is perfectly good reason. We'll see what happens first. M Gang Boss? Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, I was like wait, I'm what? Pretty sure it was like, <laughs> it's a very clean trade, no matter what outcome it is. And ultimately, the two versus the three. The two plosion here is actually is actually a pretty big deal. It's, yeah, it's, it is. I mean, I, she would likely actually probably want to want to attack in with the uh, with the what's that guy? Void Terror. Void Terror. <laughs> then uh, attack with the end. But, gotcha. but the... I think almost any kind of circumstance, Hellfire would be problematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in the end. It, Somewhat didn't matter because the imps, of course, won't do anything. But the void terror, even if it got an optimal trade, would still at best be a three three uh, against the two three. So I think um, in this scenario, it's implosion was somewhat inconsequential as long as it just happened. So this might provoke a response. Uh, Life coach is not in a position to hellfire and then play a molten giant. I believe. No, he's going to be a little short man. He's going to be one, one man short. And, and even then, you, you, feel, you might still not feel like you can get away with not playing the Molten Giant because 
What about just Drake yeah. trade into the Void Terror? You can taunt it afterwards. Is that ever a play, or is Hellfire mandatory right now? Because, I mean, the Drake does put up a really big body on the board to use as trading, and you can also combine it with the Molten uh, with Sun Fury. It's a tough position, because if you if you attack into the Spider and then Hellfire, you're actually still leaving your opponent with, with three power. Right, play. Exactly. You're going You're going down to 14, 14. from Hellfire alone. Yeah, so you'd be on eleven technically, and you, possibly mm, less than that. But you're also past the you're also past the mana turn point where uh, he's you, don't, you, you, you can taunt and heal. That's one of the things that you have to always be careful of. Life Co is Life Coach playing two games at once? <laughs> Wait, he didn't uh, Sun Fury. Oh, I guess no, he no, he's saving, he's saving Sun Fury, I believe, for Molten Giant, yeah. which, which I definitely appreciate. And here. I mean, this could potentially bait out the owl from Eloise. I doubt it won't. I, I, I imagine uh, you know, it, it, it will not. I hope it will not for oh, her sake. But. Life coach is not happy. What, what did, was there a misplay that I missed? Uh, it looks like he's, he's sort of calculating things, talking to himself, shaking his head. Wow. He is the definition of mad scientist. He's, he, his intensity when he plays is incredible to me. Uh, yeah, I mean... And it's fine because oh, it's not in the room. <laughs> he, can talk he wants. He goes just talking German. And yeah, she understand. And know. she might just do the uh, the Chinese, right? <laughs> so well, we uh, they're taking a very long time on some of these turns, mm -hmm. but for very good reason. This is the tournament life on the line. Oof! And the the owl does come down to take out the. I'd be afraid of a shadow flame if I didn't owl this. It would be even yeah. worse. That's, 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 that's fair. That's fair. I mean, hellfire is still a problem. One thing that um, Life Coach does do is if she, if Eloise attacks fully into this, he can do Hellfire plays. Right, but because Eloise, she's actually but she's not. She's she accounting for Hellfire. Hellfire. Yeah, she's accounting for Hellfire. You told me she was a pretty proficient handlock player, and this kind of shows right there. Just uh, she knows when somebody goes all in and gets punished. Handlock is actually one of the decks that that is probably the most important to have familiarity with to yeah. play against. I actually remember my uh, my very first tournament that I, uh, that I played in <laughs> after uh, after I sort of started playing, uh, where I played against I believe it was named Rhea playing Handlock, and this was back in last, last year. Standing, he just right. crushed me three games in a row, and he messaged me after. He's like, "You haven't played against Handlock much ever." Right? Yeah. Like, actually, never. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very surprising deck the first time you run into it, but then as soon as you know there were game mix, it's a little easer to. to predict i mean it's 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 so hard yeah it takes it takes a lot of getting used to just in terms of understanding the various health and mana flash points that are important for the various giant combinations so i think on the other side too handlock's one of the hardest decks to play in hearthstone yeah. and it forever will be perfectly uh, because nice. because of how much it dances with disaster with the health lines uh mm -hmm. you always are in danger of dying so you have to know the metagame like the back of your hand so here, not playing... I mean, he didn't want a Dark Bomb, is my guess. He definitely wants a Sun Fury. Because if he wanted to Dark Bomb, obviously yeah. popping the Spider first was uh, was correct. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa that man. is potentially really scary in about yeah, a Yeah, because of no. uh, the idea that the... Oh that get my popped. god. Wow. I, I don't know. I mean, I think Implosion yeah, I think might implosion be better. Is better. I, I agree that Implosion is better. <laughs> I think that... Now that I think of it... Ellie should... should is in a position where she can attack her uh, her spiders in, and then implosion the Four, the watcher, and then yeah. she's going to have a huge amount of, of potential demons threatening for the next turn. Right. And, and even then, if they're one ones, right? It doesn't her, matter. Her opponent right? just used. They're one ones for now. Yeah, they're ones for now. Exactly. Just uh, hold your hold your breath. I and mean, life coach did just use the board clearing effect. Well. Okay. So. I mean, the molten is. is still troublesome because it does go through. Uh, like, that's three M's dead. Oh! That is a, a, Eloise's second two-plosion of the game, which yeah. imp it hurts in particular right now because it actually it costs her multiple imps. Not only does it give her fewer imps, but she has to attack in with the additional one here. Right. Yeah. And Hellfire is, is like, I mean, Shadow Flame is kind of scary here as well, right? Because the attack into the Void You can't play around Shadow Flame. Yeah, I, of I course, it's too late. You're basically all in at this point. Yeah. And, oh! Oh! Wait, 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 wait! Wow. That's six damage left. If she, if life coach goes for this, that's that's really big. Yeah. So attack, shadow flame, two imps spawn, molten giant defender. I mean, molten giant anti heal bot even. Yeah. That's bringing you up. Anti heal bot is yeah. probably good enough. Wow, this, these have been a couple of, of huge swings in these turns. Actually, you would go anti heal bot shadow flame, or would you rather keep the? Because you could keep the two three n. I don't know, which one? Nah, is three three is better. A... Three three is better. Yeah. Yeah, you can just attack. I wonder if he's actually just going to play the uh, defender now. He can play defender and heal bot. 
which is They're way actually, worse. It's way, right it's, now, it's bad. Well, it's way worse against Melganis, but it looks like it's a very strong play in general. If if Life Coach does this, he's signing his own death warrant. It's it's not, not, it's, not it's not a total disaster, but it ends up going quite. And it looks like that's the play he's going for. Maybe he actually cast Shadow Flame afterwards. The, yeah, he can cast Shadow Flame on cast Shadow Flame Argus. afterwards. And it looks like yeah. Oh it's, man. Malganis. So does Malganis do a lot here because he's gonna spawn imps that are smaller. The thing yeah. is, there's no answer for Malganis from uh, from Life Coach or Elus Elus there is, side. I think. Yeah, there's Dark Bomb. So Malganis. Yeah, snap play, but it's a disaster, but not a complete one because Life Coach still has a way to deal with it. It's not as though the board was. He actually, yeah, he actually can clear this Malganis off right. the board with uh, the Dark Bomb or Shadow Flame. Right. Right, Dark Bomb's probably going to be preferable. Shadow Flame will be the ultimate oh, Shadow, answer. Shadow Flame may... may uh, actually, no, he probably won't need the Shadow Flame because those imps will just be 1-1 one, one afterwards. Afterward, so. yeah, the threat is not big enough. After think that. about how different this game is if uh, if Eloise hit even 3 on, right, on well. that implosion. She has 2 more imps in play. Malganis stays alive. And Mal Malganis is able... she's able to clear the entire board and Malganis lives. Alright, so we'll see what Life Coach does. Is Whoa! That's... Uh, that's really a really big draw. There's a lot of nine play. cost demons, but <laughs> just hanging out. That's in this a really game. big They're draw. Everywhere. <laughs> and, and in the next couple of turns here, um, the, 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 the weird thing too is that like life coach can't do anything else. Turn outside the dark bomb. It or, could tap if he wants to. I mean, yeah. So he's gonna most likely tap. Yeah. Are you afraid though of the doom guards and the POs? You haven't seen. You've yeah, seen one PO. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. You've seen one power overwhelming. Uh, I say you go for the tap. 15. Most likely you can pick up mid range mini. He still has to hit sludge belchers and other cards like that. Do they get played in that deck? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. You don't, don't go don't play, play. Game about sludge belchers. Don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> There's mountains. Yeah. So it looks like, I mean, Life Coach can trade his board. Ooh, okay. Well, this actually gets a lot better now. He can actually play the yeah. Defender of Argus That's... if he wants. And trade attack a... just the, the, the heal bot into Melganis, Dark Bomb, and then kill one of these uh, these minions, or just go face. Pretty good top deck for Life Coach. Yeah, that was an excellent draw on Life Coach's part. So, I think Eloise is stuck, like, hoping for Dr. Boom. Yeah, she's she's in a really bad position now, particularly given the Melganis and Jaraxxus in Life Coach's hand. Okay. And that doesn't help nearly as much as uh, she wants, but it's something to play, at least. She can tap, so like now she can tap with she can play Void Caller and Defender of Argus and tap, and then at worst the flame gets pulled out without doing the damage. Um, before, like you're always worried about making sure that you can have board presence here and without losing too much. But does that change your turn at all? It's okay. Probably not, because it's just a uh, it's just gonna die most likely if you play it. So you could keep it for the following turn. Yeah, I don't think the juggles actually change anything. Here, no, they really don't. The only thing that it... Because the Void Caller doesn't really pull out anything else of note or, of notoriety, because Doomguard can just be played from the hand. As a top deck. The only exception is if Doomguard gets tapped into Dr. Boom, for example. So this this is her best chance. But this is where the, just keeping the Shadow Flame is just so big in, in potential. Because like even though Eloise might build the board up with smaller minions, he always has the final trump card. Mm -hmm. They play Draxxus here. Oh. Or is that too weak? Because you have Malganus coming up, you have the Infernals for the Shadow Flames, you can clean up pretty much everything um, after this point. Or is Malganus just straight up better? Yeah, he Malganus thinks Malganus is, is better. <laughs> I mean, how yeah. do you de deal 7 damage through the taunts? Like, 10 damage Eloise needs to get before she can even hit face ever again. Yeah, she's gonna have to tap. I think the Malganus represents a, a win. Like, it's, it's like a game, it's yeah. a win condition, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's still possible, though. We're looking at, uh, like, if you use the juggler yeah, with the, the... Yeah, play out the hand. It's actually possibly going to clean up the board completely, I think. The juggles hit perfectly. Well, in the best case scenario, it isolates Malganus, so that way you can't... Uh, like, if he Shadow Flames, he has to commit Malganus to it, right. or uh, Malganus has to get through the taunts. As long as it doesn't hit the face, Malganus right? Malganus for one. Yeah, as long as it doesn't hit the face. I think, yeah, you want to trade in here, and now you want to play another another minion. Waywalker on the outside. To try and shoot Malganus. One on each. Oh! Free flame him. Wow. No and damage. And juggles on the 2-1. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, one more juggle. One more juggle. Oh! oh sniper juggler there. 
the board is gone, but hey. I mean, Life Coach does still have a very powerful yeah, yeah. He, has, just... he has Lord Jaraxxus, as well as Twilight well, Drake plus Shadow I mean, the, Dr the Jaraxxus is not good here. It's only good as a way to secure his win. Oof. So he, he can Shadow Flame this. Yeah, I like the Shadow Flame. But sure. if Eloise grabs some kind of Doom board Guard with Doom Guard or with Doctor Who, and she has a tap to get there. Yeah. No? Power overwhelming. And then... Dr. Oh! Boom! Oh, wow! wow. I mean, the uh, Dr. Boom is such a big deal because uh, the power Life Coach doesn't have it. He doesn't have any big game hunter. Or does he? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> right back at you! There's two damage, <laughs> plus the, the, the four, the power of a well. Doom Guard six. could seal this. Doom Guard could seal it. Hypothetically speaking. Uh, hypothetically, Doom Guard could do the. Oh, oh, that's, oh, that's oh, pretty oh, good. Oh, actually, into, into a, a Doom Guard. You see Eloise. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! What? The Doom Guard arrives! <laughs> is that lethal? I, I don't know. I, I think it might be. I don't do math. That's it. That's. That's. That's that enough. Was oh a my game. God, what a crazy game. Exactly. That was lethal. exact wow. lethal. That was one of Are the you craziest kidding me? games of Hearthstone that I have ever seen. There were so many huge swings back and forth. Wow. Oh my god, look at the crowd there, they're just in shock. shock. Yeah. In absolute shock. Even Wreckful smiling. <laughs> when is he not? Yeah, wife, wife coach is dead. <laughs> wow, that was, that was, that was a broken oh man. Goodness. He's a broken man. That was an amazing end. And, and now Life oh, Coach is benched. Wild. He's benched. Now Life oh, Coach is benched. Right. So, it is huge. So now Druid this... is uh, cornered. Mm -hmm. And then you can go ahead and avoid anything that the uh, you know the warlock is really good at, like like the priest. You can play you can play priest now, and it's your best chance to get a win is against the druid deck. And a lot of people traditionally have felt like uh, druid was a bad matchup for, <sighs> for priest. priest. Yeah. But the the modern, as we were saying earlier, the modern dragon druid decks are really about playing a lot of yeah. oversized minions early, and that's exactly what druid struggles with. Oh no, life coach. He was life supposed to walk to the bench, but uh, I think he needs a walk after that because. A lot of the way the, the sequences, was just like one damage here, one damage there, the way the juggles happened, the way the implosions happened, uh, there was a lot of good and bad beats on both sides, and ultimately what came down to it was being able to hit that Doom Guard on the final tap. And killing the 2-1 with that last juggle was... Oh, I don't know, that, were, was, that was... My were, heart was beating just... like crazy. <laughs> I can't even imagine what's going through the players. And that brings Temple Storm really back into it. Like well, Life Coach wants nothing to do with this bench, <laughs> but he's going to have to sit there. It's the rule, Life just, just for five seconds, Life Coach. Wait for the camera to cut away, and then you can leave. Make <laughs> <laughs> like it more cool. comfortable. you got to fill up. It's actually the cry in. <laughs> okay, yeah, and he's gone. He's gone, guys. <laughs> it's, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Everyone's like, no, I didn't follow the rules. Thank was, you. That was incredible. That was just a, an unbelievable series of events that we just saw. At the end and of that the game. odds were getting pretty. Like the thing is, it looks crazy because it's runner runner. But the thing is, at this stage, both players had a really small yeah, deck. Yeah, there was like ten cards or less. So it was basically like every draw was like a twenty five percent or like players, something along those lines. Like you're drawing two cards a turn with life staff. Right. So I mean, you you will end up being able to dig pretty deep into your deck and find those yeah. things. But I mean, just the timing of it, it was like Doctor Boom off the top, Big Game Hunter I, off the top. I think the only thing I could have made. Crazier because yeah, we hit um, we hit like a nine point eight out of ten. In terms of the wildness <laughs> Missing the boom there. box was the boom box yeah. killing itself with power overwhelming and then hitting, hitting the, the face. No yeah, abuse that, of yeah. sergeant. We needed one or, more point. this, no, no. There's a level beyond that. You hit your opponent's boom bot, which is your boom bot, <laughs> and you hit the opponent's face for lethal. Yeah. What, what, what a roller coaster! Yeah, emotion. that was that was really a, a, an. Outrageous, I thought outrageous Life Coach game. was stabilized very comfortably. Now Gar is likely to just queue up his two decks into this, and mm -hmm. then Dice will probably end up possibly winning against Hype, but then that leaves Life Coach with Handlock against yeah. Freeze Mage. Um, it's a deck that, that's kind of clunky to deal with, I find. Sometimes, you know, if they tap too much, they can overextend into death. Yeah. Um, but Malganis, you know, again, a really good lifesaver. Right, Eloise is uh, done for the day, so that means that uh, it's just Gara and Hyped here at the house. Actually, all the remote players can take a break. Yeah, they, they, they can just go yeah. to I mean, they can't go to bed. There's more matches to yeah, play. Take, take a nap. Well, for one of them. For one of them, there's a match. That's true. For the other it's one, true. they're just going to have to call it a night. They can take a nap. <laughs> it's, it's risky, to say the least. There's no one there to well, Would you even be able to? Right, like just like ten thousand. No, not yeah, I, I, could, I mean, I couldn't sleep last night at all. Like, I, I was just, I was just wired, you know, all night. And yeah, yeah. And here we have exactly what we expected. We see Gara queuing the priest yeah. up now that he can no dodge choice. the handlock into Tice's druid. But if Tice wins this. Um, the handlock is going to have a, a bit of an easier time against the breeze, oh, right? Definitely. Like it's going to be a lot faster uh, to win against breeze than it is going to be like uh, against a mage deck, for instance. I don't know, Dice. Uh, 
He's a good true player. He always draws a ramp. I mean, this is this is certainly this is certainly not a an unwinnable. I mean, there's no unwinnable watch matchup for Druid really. Uh, when I played against Tice uh, in the the Priest versus Druid matchup the other day, he he just played Doctor Boom in turn three and I right. died. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. That is, that is one way for Druid to seize the board. But and we've seen Gar also has some awkward draws, right? Like mm-hmm. last game with the Priest, he didn't have a minion to play till turn five. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's true. I mean, any any minions. deck can have uh, awkward draws. Dru- Druid is one that tends to be more prone to it due to the, the higher concentration of high cost minions thanks to the fact that it has so yeah. so much mana ramp uh, and there's also the opposite problem sometimes you just draw a bunch of mana ramp and nothing to do with it darnassus made this both better and worse it's true. Right? it polarized the the draws even mm-hmm. further yeah it made it so you're you are more likely to have mana ramp but you're also more likely to have all mana ramp and uh and here no. these opening hands are pretty poor for both players yeah you kind of want to mulligan everything away and it's a matter of uh Hitting the right card. Would you throw the Shredder if there's possibility that you pick up Wago or Innervate? Or is this, are you as likely to get another Shredder afterwards? I don't know. I think I think if I'm in Tice's position, I recognize that it's extremely important for me to, to actually get on the board quickly because uh, you're playing a Druid deck that doesn't really have the ability to come back from behind. And Priest is a deck, Dragon Priest in particular, that can yeah. snowball incredibly hard if you, you give it an advantage. Uh, thanks to the Priest hero power being able to preserve your minion's health once they get into combat. Yeah, probably you're just going to go ramp here. I mean, it's kind of what you always do. They're going to check out whether or not their opponent's mulliganed well, anything. This, so. is actually, this is actually something, by the way, if anyone from Blizzard is, is, is watching this, make it so that players can't see how many cards their opponent's mulliganed yeah. until the mulligan Spe- decisions are over. Like, like, it, it, is, it is crazy to me that we have to sit here and wait for both players to mulligan, even though I'm sure they know what they want to mulligan, <laughs> because they want to get the information and don't want to give information to their opponent. All right, the ramp was picked up. I think he kept the shredder, though, Oof. in mulligan, from what I gather. And this is not a good draw from Gara. Gara's draw nope. is is all high cost minions. He's what he's really looking for here primarily Warm are uh, Warmrust agent, uh, e- either Blackwing technician or Dark Cultist, depending. I believe we saw Blackwing technician from his deck. Yep. Those are the, your your big turn two and turn three minions, especially along with Valens chosen, are your absolute best uh, best chance to actually beat Druid. Oh, uh, but, and now this... this is a great draw from Tice. Yeah, Tice. Uh, uh, he actually has a reputation of never not drawing well. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> always has it. I don't know what's up with that, by the way. It's actually like the Fire War Act of Dice. Yeah, it, it's weird. But um, it, it just is very effective. Dog's on the other side, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess it's supposed to be dog there's just... a dog kind of druid, and then there's a Tice kind of druid. Uh, and then there's the... Ooh, uh-oh. The um, Gar type of priest. Yeah, we, Gar, I mean, we saw Gar's priest earlier uh, you know, today. Where he played he, fantastic in he, that he game. He played excellent, and he drew very badly. Yeah. But uh, here... It's a lot harder to catch up in, in the matchup against uh, against Druid than it is against Freeze Mage. Yeah, I mean, there's no a Shadow Word Pain here. It's gonna be a even with Shadow Word Pain stuff. This is a, this is a pretty crushing moment because it's uh, if this Druid wins, you have to play Handlock. Yeah, this is a really big game, and and right now, I mean, you even see it in Gar's face. He he is is just really unhappy. So his hope is that he forces a uh, hero power out of his opponent. Yeah, and if he does, then that's going to slow down the, the turn 5 play. There's also the possibility of getting Velen's Chosen on the back of this. If you do, I mean, uh, you can always... Guard pitched everything. He's charge. Oh, man. Yeah, he doesn't want his opponent to draw cards. But he pitched everything. He even pitched his Twilight Guardian, which would right. have been okay. He still has something to do, though. Oh, well. Uh... The Dragon King Sorcerer's not bad here. And yeah. he, he is building to a Black and Corruptor next turn. Because Tice did choose to uh, cat form that Druid... He's going to have to hero power down with a swipe to 3-5 mm-hmm. yeah, to keep his board alive. The Blackwing Corruptor is pretty big to fight back onto the board. Yeah, you... Corruptor here is actually a pretty big deal. And I'm actually somewhat surprised that Tice did choose to cat form attack it rather than just go bear form because it yeah. does open it up to Blackwing Corruptor, which is one of the few ways that Gara can actually get back into this game. And the 4-6, I mean, the only drawback, I guess, is that Velen's Chosen and Blackwing Corruptor would have done it. But that's the thing. It's a combination of both. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's really um, afraid of, of, of Velen's Chosen. That's, like, the big thing. Yeah. Given, given that Gara did, did basically do nothing for the first bunch of turns, it is it is reasonable to suspect that he might have a Valence Chosen in his hand. So no it. Dr. Boom for you, says Gara. You can kill my minion, but no Dr. Boom nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, he's going to be well equipped though to deal with it because the Drake Power Shield lets him get a Nova for three damage. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm not disliking Gar's position. It was really horrible and it's still kind of uh, flimsy, but he can come back in this game. He has Light Bomb too. That's Probably. something that does impact Druid a lot because they don't really—they're mm-hmm. not really known for minions that have too much more health than than attack. attack yeah, yeah. like except for like Keeper of the Grove, Druid the Claw. Druid minions, and then all the other ones are usually kind of, even statted. Yeah, 
Ooh. Oh my goodness. Wow, a second corruptor pickup here. That, that's Garnish. huge. This is this is a gigantic tempo swing. Into another Darnassus Aspire. And he's actually able to power shield this one, which is, is going to make it. Oh! oh! Speaking of big swings. That, oh my goodness! Oh. That's so big. Yeah, that 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 took that took guards. Ty, Tyson's like Tyson's a little bit gross. Now. He's, <laughs> he's like, like wow. he's like, is this really Hearthstone like competitive tournament? Yeah, that was that was really unfortunate for Gara there. He, you know, had a, a great way, ooh, oh, ooh, ooh. He had a great way to get back into the game, but it's is right. is kind of in, in trouble here. Yeah, but unfortunately Chimbo. that gets silenced. Yeah, but you have a chance when you when you pick it up, you you consider it definitely. Yeah. It incidentally counters Boom if the opponent attacks into it, but it was meant for Patron. What's really funny too is that um, the the TGT game board is supposed to cheer for you when you're winning, oh, and uh, Gara's board was cheering. Oh, was it? So, well, he played a huge minion, so yeah. he thinks he's winning. The game the game thinks he is. Oh, right. Also, he played a dragon, and yeah. well, four, four damage Boom bot to the face. It will be considerable. I mean, you could always just Drake Wrath to finish it off. Four damage again. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Gara, Gara is not getting the best of things this game. Even size is he gross. Can, uh, now you can Drake Wrath that for four. Yeah, and I would then probably hit do the that face. For seven. Uh, I wonder if that allows him to win next turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep, it does. Yep. It does. And there's no way you can actually stop this. Yeah, there's, there's, there's zero way. Light Bomb Heal does nothing, so. There, I, I don't, I don't even. Life. I mean, with that, with that kind of sequence, I'm not even sure if the Blackwing Corruptor staying alive would have truly made a difference. I think it might have actually helped a lot because he could use Nova with the Blackwing to kill Doctor mm -hmm. Boom's he, body. He ultimately so. needed Taunt. No, oh, you could have killed Doctor Boom much more easily. That's true. Yeah. Maybe would have been the case, but uh, that, that's just gonna wrap it up. Tice, turn nine combo, and there's really nothing Gar can do about yeah. it. Textbook Druid gets the ramp and rolls you over, although Gara's hand was absolutely horrendous. We saw no Whelps, no Worm Stage, and no 3-drop either, so yeah, everything was a very slow start for it, him. It's also, yeah. like, sort of his fault, though, because you, this is why, like, Kalento and all them, like, run two Shrink Meisters. Like, yeah. So that way they get that consistency. I mean, we do, we do see the Confessor Peltris just yeah. sitting in his hand from the, 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 the opening turns of the game, and you know, that, that's a card that's very dedicated to winning control matchups and can really punish you if you draw it early against yeah. aggressive decks. I mean, that also could be its ticket to winning his hand lock. But... It's true. It's true. That that may Great be... Great point, yeah. It, uh, one of the, one of the, the <laughs> things that uh, Priest decks often uh, run into problems with is actually beating the card Jaraxxus. And Confessor Peltris is one of the ways you can do that. You can actually, amazingly, you yeah. can actually get to the point in the game where your opponent has Jaraxxus and you are doing more powerful things because you're activating Peltris. Mm -hmm. that, that is a possibility. Feels but uh, again. again, this is going to be a really tough spot. He, he wasn't going... Okay, so the Hunter can still beat the Handlock for sure. Um, the Sorry. <laughs> so the the Freeze Mage is always kind of iffy. The only thing that really hurts is the Priest. And I think uh, in this scenario, Gara going with the Priest immediately, just not being able to get the draw is definitely feeling pretty bad. But I have to kind of chalk it up to the fact that this is how he built his Priest deck, and it is definitely more inconsistent than some of the Yeah, what do you think about Blackwing tech, by the way? A lot of people say that you might as well just, just play Cultists and cut the Blackwings and add other cards because it's a minion-heavy Priest deck. And there's really no value in keeping a card that needs dragons to be enabled on top of all the rest you already have. I, I think that, I mean, I played Cultist in my Priest deck over, right. over Blackwing tech here I, i've played some with mixes as well um I, I think that in some cases you actually want to have more early uh early three drop minions because they are so good at, at pressuring things like druid and things like patron they're among your best cards because you're able to get in the board quickly okay so the goal is it would be like a secondary three drop you put in not the primary one uh, I, I think the cultist in general is more powerful it is weaker against uh piloted shredder and uh and death spite at least the front end of the death spite um, though, if you do have minions in play already, you know, Cultus is actually going to be stronger in many of those cases yeah. as well. Makes sense. All right, cool. I have my uh, resident expert on Dragon Priest. <laughs> I can just consult on you whenever I need to build a deck. Life Coach has been unbenched. So True. this is the this is the opportunity. You have to beat Life Coach five times. God, that that five, the, the hunter five times. It's three times. Three times. Three times. Oh, you mean total of five times. Total of five. Sure. He, he's already lost twice, and that that's just like really hard to ask for. I mean, this is this is definitely definitely tough because. The, the Priest is going to, to very much struggle here. Uh, we did see that Gara has, you know, the Confessor Peltos, which we talked about,
But uh, I don't. I don't. There was a light bomb I think in his deck that we saw in the Freeze Mage game that never got played. I was mm -hmm. laughing about dark bombing, the light bombing the acolyte. Mm -hmm. um, so he has a light bomb, which helps a lot against Handlock. Yeah, light bomb's huge there too. Yeah. So I mean, it's not it's not a an automatic loss by any means, yeah, but no. it is definitely it is definitely one of the toughest matchups that Dragon Peace has to face. All right, Gar's gonna go wow, for it wow. right now. Okay, like, so you know what? I think I think they're just going for. They're like, we gotta win this eventually. Like, this, this, we have to win this eventually. So rather than waste our time. <laughs> And frankly, in particular, in, in an event as long as this, for, for both teams' sake, I actually think this is a totally reasonable option. Right. Yeah. Uh, during the normal season, when uh, game wins were the tiebreaker for ultimately seeding in the, the final round. It's different. It's different. Here, you just have to win. You're playing to win huh. or lose, period. There's a lot of tools now that I think about it. Vulgen also is a reasonable way to deal with threats. And yeah. With some, so, so much board centric early game, like that's reasonable. Yeah, no, Vulgen, Vulgen is another one of the excellent cards that uh, Dragon Priest does have access to. Yeah. Do you keep it in your opening? hand just because it's hand lock. I, I think you might. I, 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 I think that I would yeah. keep Vulgen and Mulligan the other three cards here because you... Northshire is one of your tickets to win, but the card draw, I mean, equalizing, but it's also uh, not very high pressure compared to some of your other tools. It's also it's also not a card that you can really take advantage of very yeah. well in the early game. Right. Uh, it isn't like you're playing against Zoo where you can attack into minions and heal it. Or hunters, things like that, where it's actually able to contest the board. But it looks like uh, it looks like Gara does choose to keep the North Shark cleric. He's got the death. I think what the cleric at least does is, if he has Valence chosen, it's not a dead card. It's true. So he has opportunities to bump into stuff and heal, punish his opponent for being too greedy. I mean, there, is there ever an argument to throw it down on the board turn one just because you cut off the first life tap? It is. I mean, you probably can still just life tap. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's so one free damage then. It is true. You get you get you get him good. Yeah. <laughs> Dragon oh, in God. the hand. Gar could play the cleric here to force his opponent to either decide to life tap or to um, the bomb. To dark bomb and throw off his turn four play, but I mean cleric isn't really particularly threatening in this sort With of With Valence Chosen coming up, it would be, but there's an owl as well to negate that completely. Mm -hmm. And you could also play a giant into it, which would contest it unless the Shadow of Death shows up. Oh man, he's stealing his opponent from Moltens. It's pretty, like pretty, pretty interesting. Like, thank you. If he's too awfully toward the end, <laughs> if he's too awfully toward the end, I will. This is interesting because this is actually well, actually with handlock you can't ever truly evaluate that because the t the two health right. that you get is also two health that you couldn't play molten giant and there's a lot of yeah and get down. Well, it, it will matter if we see molten plays. It significantly changes the dynamic of the game enough that you can't just say, "Oh, well, two damage of lethal." Yeah, be it's nothing, right? Exactly. It's... I'm actually, I'm actually a little surprised by that play because there, there are a lot of, of decks where I do feel like it's important that you are able to cut your opponent off from, uh, from the ability to effectively play Moltens by healing by not damaging them. But I've actually found that the the priest, uh, the dragon priest deck, does need to play pretty proactively in order to actually keep up in this matchup. Yeah, or or uh, he wants. To play frost giants. I don't know. Like, maybe you, you just hear power. You can heal yourself. Yeah. What if? What if it doesn't count? Have you tried? <laughs> oh, it does. It does. Okay. This is this how many times you've used your hero power? If he's going to heal his opponent he again, he's just oh. really determined. So what he's going to always do is the just light shall forward. burn you. Well, in that case, I don't mind getting burned once in a while. <laughs> The Drake is a bit more threatening than the Giant, but then again, uh, you know there's two deaths in Jitkara's deck just from what right. we saw played earlier, so you might want to go for the Drake. Generally, I'm more scared of Twilight Drake than I am of Giants for that yeah, reason. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we do know uh, that Life Coach doesn't, but uh, that there is that Vulgen waiting in the wings to potentially take out that Twilight Drake and get a lot of value off of it. Yeah, and then he's going to be forced to play the Giant, which Gar incidentally has a Shadow Word Death for. Well, he might, yeah, he might, he might even owl the Vulgen too because it's like a six ten or six nine. Like it's like way too big. It will be very difficult to deal with. Six, six nine is like threatening. Yeah, I'd say like, so. You can't, yeah, you can't actually like you can't play any mid sized minions reasonably. It trades with almost everything. Pretty every heals giant. it up every single time. So yep. there's no way you're gonna be able to get it off the board for a while. So the Drake here is the better play overall. Um, like you said, Priest can't deal with this outside of Shrink Meister, Power, or Shadow or Pain, or in this case, Coin Vulgen. This game is not looking too bad for Gara because he seems to have a foothold on the board that Life Coach has to respond to, and the Giant's not going to be able to Ooh. stick. 6-9. Full Reaper status. Yeah, that is, that is a, a big fellow. 6-9, confirmed. <laughs> Kappa. That's right, Nog. <laughs> I'm Hashtag sorry. Hashtag I'm 14 and this is funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm playing
playing off the audience. When <laughs> That's right. Get a, like, You're targeting <laughs> our demographic. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can't fault me for that. So, what's the play? I mean, I, the giant looks pretty okay, but I mean, he dies to Vol'jin, and there could even be a Nova on the back end, which would kill the giant without even using a death at all, or even a Blackwing Corruptor. So even though the giant is tempting, it might not even work, just based off of uh, what your opponent might be holding. You know the deck pretty much by heart. You know what's like really amusing too is I think now that he's seen his opponents like unwilling to attack the face or even heal it, he can like get yeah, away with just tapping and just being brutally. like, yeah, yeah, you you won't attack me, right? Yeah, and and then let Gara comes out with the OTK mind blast. I wonder, Ooh, like, Malagos. would Gara consider just attack? Uh, no, like like Black just Wind? like like if he, if he removes this and he just doesn't attack, a Black Wind Corruptor. Is pretty weak because you need yeah, to Yeah, you get coiled. Version. Yeah, it's pretty mediocre. So, Shadow or Death might be the most reasonable, but the problem with Shadow or Death is he doesn't have a good follow up to this. An Owl, Hellfire. I mean, you can't play the Cleric here if you didn't play it earlier. It doesn't accomplish anything for the time being. I really wonder if there's any case for, like. No, it's, Not attacking? No, no, I'm saying, like, Holy Nova, but it's like, oh. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You could attack into yeah, it and then Nova, but it's on three health, so it dies to Dark Bomb. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> well, uh, if I mean to be consistent with your line of play, you don't attack. You never attack. I think the way to win this is you never attack. Well, what's he gets the attack. Attack. He's got threats besides Molten. Right? You, you, you let him fatigue. That's the game plan. That's what he's doing. And then he heals him. He doesn't get the Molten. <laughs> uh, I guess. I mean, Vulgen is pretty intimidating. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I mean, maybe maybe that's actually the best way to approach this match. But I haven't. I haven't actually tried this particular. Yeah. What if it this works? You learned I mean, this something. Is an interesting game game this, this definitely is. I feel. I, I'm. I'm curious to see how this ends. Wait, up. but one thing Gar didn't do is heal his opponent to thirty. He did not. It's true. And he could have. So why why there? Gar actually knows all the math and permutations for every turn possible. Spot. Yeah. yeah, this is the sweet spot. Twenty twenty is he the didn't spot. play around battle rage. That's the, <laughs> the weird thing. Right? Yeah, the whole spell slinger outside of game battle rage. He played Nexus Singer Sarad. Life taps into unstable portal. It's kind of hard to stop into rage, spell slinger <laughs> into battle rage. But then you're happy because he fatigues, right? Um, he used a shadow or death, so he knows Malganus is much more likely to be strong. One thing about the Dragon Priest too is I don't believe Gar is running Sylvanas, correct? I, I don't believe so. I've not seen, seen it. it. I mean, one thing that if Gar is on the uh, the fatigue plan, if his goal is to just exhaust Life Coach of threats, I think that he he actually should have just used his his Vulgen as basically a removal effect for that giant because you know, he he's gonna have to deal with every giant every giant, giant one at a time deck. right so I, mean, I haven't like i said i haven't played this particular matchup you know dragon priest versus handlock in this fashion before but i actually played a lot of dragon mage versus handlock and every time i had the opportunity to use something that wasn't like a polymorph on a giant to kill it i would because it was so yeah. essential to my game plan of fatiguing them that i had those tools to deal with their giants later on I mean, even just, you know, yeah, maybe maybe you lose the Vulgen to a Mortal Coil or a Dark Bomb, but you still have Shadow or Death. Yeah. Well, Makes a trade. Let's Melganus come, come out. Oh, Jiraxis. Oh, and this is That's actually good for him, in, potentially. In, if his plan is to uh, is to win it's a fatigue, fatigue game, this is actually a big deal. Yeah, because Jiraxis totally is the right. most important card. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, the... Uh... The Infernals won't be coming out. Drax is one of the reasons why he's the favorite all the time. Drax yeah. is the single biggest reason, in fact. Yes. On yeah. top of Twilight Drakes and big non-stop 8-8s. And, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, and everything else. Specifically, yeah, specifically yeah, with this game plan, yes. yes. It's, it's, it's just... It's just Jaraxxus' ability to generate an, an unending line of threats is really what's so threatening uh, in terms of the, the late-game power of Handlock. Yeah. And the good thing now is that I guess the Fatigue plan is moving forward. Because he coiled your, your Owl. Although it's still a very dangerous, like without a light bomb very soon from Gara, this looks like you just escalate into, I mean, an almost automatic loss. I don't know. It, it looks really dire. Yeah, there's no way for him to keep this Cabal Shadow Priest alive unless he wants to let Thorsten live. So it seems like he's going to have to just kill this off and then. The only way would be to top deck the... really hard with the Northshire heal and then find Shadow or Death, but it doesn't look like something you'd ever want to do. Again, I think that it's just so important that he has those deaths as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, like, he, I, I he that, has them, so... I think, that, I think that it's very important that he, again, uses resources that aren't Shadow or Death to deal with things like Thorson as well. 
So he expects to, to force opponent to play everything but Molten's, and then with two less threats, you know, taken out from just being overhealed, Life Coach will never be able to go in for damage. But does that imply that he's playing double Light Bomb? Uh, it could be. It feels like that's one of the uh, implications of that. And I like this. I like this play from Gara here, uh, using the the Corruptor to take down the Emperor and uh, healing himself up. Yeah, Definitive Argus punishes this pretty severely, yeah. but what can you do really? I'm gonna, I'm gonna like this Doctor Boom play pretty soon too. It's it's, it's one of those minions where you play Malganus and Buff Draxus. Yeah, you're, basically you're gonna prompt a light bomb from your opponent. If you're in life coach's position here, you have to be you have to be you know basically trying to plan for what game that Gara seems to be playing, which right, is right. which is a resource yeah a resource denial fatigue plan. Okay. And yeah, Malganus here pumping Jirax. Against against uh, light bomb, this is pretty weak, but you're forcing a second death. Uh, which means your your Doctor Actually, Boom is likely to work out. How does Light Bomb interact with Malganus and a minion? They deal damage to themselves first, and, and then, then they they stay at that health if it's uh, as big as their max health. But in this case, it would basically bring Draxa down to three seven. Okay. So Chillmaw is his best bet here to be defensive. His opponent already did use one Owl, and Chillmaw is a. Six like six, so could it could actually kill the, the Malganus. You could also find the death. That's another option. Oh, or a light bomb. For death. oh man, I mean, that, it, that's rough. That's... It really, it really does look like Gara is is being pretty heavily punished for using his death early in the game when he had an opportunity to to, to trade off his minion. Yep. Uh, do you, I, I think Black Wing Technician is okay. I mean, Twilight Whelp is a dragon itself, which might be the case where you have to hold on to it for. Um, Chilma and the Twilight Garden to have impact. So the thing is, now you're asking yourself as life coach, am I overplaying into Light Bomb here? Like, is he trying to get me to play into it? Uh, so I just hold off the... I don't think the, so. I think that kind of board... It would have, prompted, it would have been played. Okay. Yeah, but one thing he can be for sure certain is that his opponent doesn't have Shadow or Death. Yeah, that's for sure. If Life Coach makes the trades, then he opens up his board to possibly like a spell damage Holy Nova. Um, the Drake would be dead, so there would have to be a Valence Chosen plus a low cost minion plus Nova. Which is like a really unlikely streak of events. Uh, well, killing out the Drake is pretty important just for the spell power. I, I'm. I think he's hesitant to play Doctor Boom for the light bomb reasons. Yeah, that's definitely what is what is going towards his mind right now. He's like, I need to have a second life yeah. against a light bomb. It's like his board is definitely threatening enough. He doesn't need it. It's fourteen points, fifteen points on the board now. All right, just kidding. Fourteen points. <laughs> no, wait, just kidding. Sixteen points. Just kidding. Seventeen points. Do we keep ramping? Sixteen. 16. Okay, sixteen. Sixteen points. Uh, yeah, dig for those answers. I mean, worst case scenario, you draw the chill mall, right? Like, what's, what's the alternative? I don't see anything else that you really can do and hope that it works out. I mean, even Light yeah, Bomb here isn't that good. Yeah, I mean, it, it will, however, kill Malganus, which is probably the reason you want it. You've only made one, molten, uh, one mountain. The Moltens you don't expect to see play anytime soon. Mm -hmm. um, so Doctor Boom is really the only next threat that you have to deal with. You've seen the Owl, I think. Uh, coming down early, so there's probably not going to be a second one from Life Coach. So Chilma is not going to get silenced. He has two opportunities to draw if he yeah. wants to really go for the Shadow or Death or Life Bomb. All right, another defensive uh, defensive line for for Gar. Yeah, I still wants think that Chilma is slightly better because it, it gives him the ability to be defensive and like. Maybe he can get Holy Nova to... Finish uh, off the boy, right? Like, clean up what's left. Right. It, it already kills the Defender. It's going to damage the Ancient Watcher. If you get so, Valence Chosen, you might be able to make something happen. Sun Fury Protect number 2 doesn't really help Life Coach here. He still is hesitant to play Dr. Boom for... He doesn't want to overcommit. So you double trade... You, would you trade Daraxxus in with the 2-3 and keep Malganus super healthy? Well... That that's a way to put it. It's not that healthy, but it, it is relatively healthy. Um, or do you expect it to die anyway to the Holy Nova with the Blackwing tech? Four health is still pretty reasonable against Priest. Yeah, there's not that many things that, that really there really punish you, you for, for four health. You can right. even taunt up Draxus now. And Malganus. Well actually no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter, it still dies, yeah. Maybe you push But you do put Malganus out of the Nova uh No, never mind, I lied. Noxious Lion. 
Well, this is a little awkward. Shomo is doing some pretty good work. You know, here. if Gara's plan actually works out, it has to be pretty fantastic. Because if Gara work, if this works out for Gara, he's a genius. Yeah, I'm but actually. If, if it doesn't, he looks like an idiot, which is right now looking <laughs> like the latter. Yeah, that's a lot of damage taken right but, now. But it, it's always easy to say on this side of things. Yeah, pick up the light bomb here, and I think he's actually in a fantastic position. What would be quite quite good? Yeah, light bomb here would potentially just be twice. game winning. Draw twice for it. No, no not light quite. bomb. Um, what do you do? Do you just heal with the cleric? It's like basically all in on light bomb. Or do you just play all the taunts and get shadow flame to lose the game? I, th I think that that Nova would actually allow you to kill Malganus, right? Like assuming the boom bots don't ruin your day. Mm, your Holy Nova only does two damage. Right, he doesn't. He doesn't. Oh, it does three. There's a Valens chosen. No, that's no, only a, that's, that's, that's only a, that's a powered shield. Oh, powered shield. You're right. Never mind. Not slide again. I keep lying. It's okay. No worries. I, I I do that all the time. He he needs to draw. Twice. Yeah, he, he needs to draw every like. It took a one outer. I don't know if he's got one card like or two light bombs. That's the question, right? With the confessor pale face, is that second light bomb dragon. hard to slot in? I and mean, if he can, he's gonna play two taunts. Is it? Ooh, no, so... Smite? Ah, Holy Nova, oh, Holy Nova is actually well. not bad. I like this. The the yeah. Holy Smite Nova might actually buy him a turn. He actually draws another card off the Nova too. Which yeah. Is nice. It could be. Uh, he needs to go. You gotta, you sort gotta of go quickly. fast. Yeah. And the thing about it is that um, he still keeps Light Bomb, right? He's going all in on the, the minions. The thing is, Life Coach right now does not have the Shadow Flame, so this might work out. And the Shadow Flame target is the most oh, likely to man, be Shadow that's Flame. That's really ambitious. Oh man, if the Shadow Flame gets picked up by Life Coach here. He still has one more room to tap into it. Yeah. And there's one of them in the deck, I think, not two. And he's trying to figure out, can I actually just go through this and not worry about Shadow Flame too much? If yeah, the boom bots are godlike, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, there is. If this kills the Wormrest agent, no. If, if that boom bot killed the Wormrest agent, that was defender it, yeah. of Argus Weevil. So... Well, actually, wait, could he... No, never mind. Yeah. Sure. Well, there's Hellfire. That, oh, that's gonna be it, right? I yeah, that's it. I believe that closes. That should things. be it. That should see. Yeah, yeah, with the defend of Argus and Hellfire, there's no way this doesn't go through. I think so. Yeah, of course it does, right? Because yeah, yeah, he has it, to go through it, one big guy. Yeah. Yeah. This is life coach for dealing with. He needs, he needs one more. Not too. Okay, much. the only way is if he inexplicably just like, runs out of time. I'm 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 a little curious why Guard didn't play the the Holy Smite Nova. Nova. I, yeah, I keep wondering about yeah, that. It felt like his best chance to. Maybe he didn't want to draw more cards with fatigue. Well, no but... dark bombs were seen either, so you might think the Doctor Boom plus dark bombs will kill you if even if everything goes well. One thing that I know for certain is that he uh, he he's definitely going to be one of those like people like no one understands my plays, no one understands me, everyone's so bad, and it's like ah. Oh. It's okay, Gar. It's okay. <laughs> everybody everybody takes loves the series. <laughs> They're six to three and advances to the semifinals to fight off against yeah. Value Town again. Our, our third matchup of the, of the right. weekend. So uh, that's right. Yeah, you guys are uh, gonna be having a little bit of fun. I mean, that's a new lineup. Yeah, be quiet, Tyus. We're trying to talk in here. Yeah. Shall I go back to the Netherlands? Step out for their interview. <laughs> you have one player at home. You can play with the second one. Not just this. No. I do not think no? so. <laughs> Somebody else can All right, an well, uh, I think before we go to an interview... You're staying. You're staying. Proton is staying. Yeah, Amos says so. You can't hear him, maybe. Before we go to our interview, we'd like to thank the sponsors that make this happen, of uh, Alpha Draft and the Amazon App Store. And, uh, you know, check out all the cool stuff. Alpha Draft's a fantasy esports site. I think you can still do stuff yeah. for the ATLC, ATLC even I right now. So. Uh, but we're running out of time, so you better sign up quick. I believe they're going to give you some early game deposits that week. And there's a stuff. shirt, you know. We're we're also giving away some shirts. Um, cool shirts. I don't know how exactly, but it'll, it'll be through the Archon Twitter. That's what that's what <laughs> at least Amaz says. Amaz nailed it. He's good. <laughs> All right, well, the two of us are out. Did you so. work for Archon Amaz? <laughs> okay. Do they you own you? You know a lot about what they do. Yeah, okay. I think they own him. All right. Uh, well, with that, we're kicking off uh, the two better-looking people, and yeah. we're going to be joined. Gandalf and Sam. And I'm going to be joined by life coach Entice, as well as a uh, you know figuratively RDU. So uh, let's go ahead and rewind back to the midpoint of that series. Uh, life coach, you went through a lot of crazy games, uh, and you looked like super intense. Were, were you able to? Like, were you rattled at all? Were you like upset with how those games went at all? With like the the warlock versus warlock game? Uh, upset. 
Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, uh, but uh, emotional, of course. Yeah, yeah I mean, sure. upset. I mean, of course, he can top deck, but it's like um, it was such a close game, and it was not even like um, I don't even mind it. Like, if it's only a very short game, but it was like. Uh, the whole game was such a struggle, and I really thought, oh, in the end, I, 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 uh, I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then, yeah, I didn't. So, <laughs> gotcha. What, what do you think were the key elements to your victory here over Tempo Storm? Um, that my teammates supported me a lot, and so I could play a lot of games. Yeah, you think so, Thais? Uh I think we had a really lot, nice uh, lineup uh, against Tempo Storm. We prepared really well yesterday too. We prepared here even a bit more. Um, mm -hmm. For this, for both situations, and uh, I think we had a really nice lineup that gave us an advantage. Oh, what, why? What happened to the mech shaman? Did it just was didn't it, really uh, work out as planned? <laughs> <laughs> did you did you um, check the score? Did you I, track it? I think it was one in ten. Is that what it is? Nah, really? Was it that bad? I think so. Oh yeah. my god! And then you were asking why we dumped nah. it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe you have your own reasons. Uh, we, we probably expected um, slightly in different uh, meta. We didn't expect that many priests, maybe. Mm. We expected some kind of different decks, and then Max Shaman made a bit, bit more sense. But yeah, I'm happy that now when it really, really matters about everything, that we called Get It Out, and uh, now we got Hunter again. So. Sure, sure. Um, now you're going up against uh, Value Town one more time. Um, now that they've seen your decks, but you, you've also retooled some of yours, some of your favorite decks, right? Tice, you're playing the Freeze Mage, uh, you're playing the Handlock. Uh, you're going to go up against Value Town here coming up. How do you feel? Is it, is it more of like you're confident or you're more familiar or do you not even really see it as Value Town? You're just going to play against any team at this stage? I think we feel uh, pretty comfortable, especially the first series was uh, really close against Value Town. Uh, with the decks, we get uh, maybe even more comfortable decks now for ourselves. So uh, um, I feel like uh, we are ready. Mm -hmm. And the third time has to be the time. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, hopefully we can see you go through. I think um, you know one thing that we noticed was that the two teams fighting in the quarterfinals were the teams that didn't have their play all players here. You know, it's mm -hmm. just the the communication might have been a barrier here. So you have to win here because RDU is not here with you. And I know Roddy has traveled with you so many events, so it must feel mm -hmm. a little bit lonely, yeah. right, Tyson? Yeah, I, it feels really sad that he cannot be here. The mm -hmm. communication is pretty hard also, and uh, yeah, hopefully next time. All right, well, uh, you don't feel lonely. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, well, uh, we're going to take a break, guys, and when we come mm -hmm. back, we're going to have the semifinal here at day three of the ATLC, so stay tuned.